And in terms of a recap, uh, collectively, the group did a few different things. Um, the last thing that happened was a meeting with the Castle Lanter family, who are potentially suspected of having connections to the Lycanthropes and their capture, as well as uh, being known for being a family, a wealthy noble family whose eldest child went missing several years ago, whose fortunes turned around this time, and who are known for their philanthropic gestures across the city, uh, such as ensuring that there are no orphans. Um, they supposedly bring in homeless off the streets into their, uh, their uh, villa on a regular basis. Um, you were asked and tasked by the Castle Lanters to find the Stone of Galore uh, and access to Neverember's money, specifically to help them pay off a debt that has been accrued and will soon be collected upon by the, by, through the, pale of the pay, payment of the souls of their children. So they need to pay off, uh, I believe it was uh, one dragon short of a million coins. What? Oh my god. Yes. And so they prom They said they didn't need all the half million dragons, that they would give you 500,000 of uh, 50,000 of them uh, if you were to find the hoard of coins um, to help save their children. Um, Alistair went on a little bit of a, a walk about how far can I get sort of side mission once again uh, after, I believe it was Zeusanu, you cast invisibility on him with your weasel, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And um, I know it's a South Asian sea otter, actually. Oh, so I, was, I was on mute, sorry. South I Asian abbreviated with, yeah. Otter for short. <clears throat> or weasel or whatever. Uh, are there other things that happened last session that I missed that should recap? Um, I'm trying to like remember what happened now. Yeah, no, we went and met the lady. She asked for our help. We got a lot of information. Was oh yeah, logo. didn't we? Didn't uh, Harry have like a seance with a dead body? That is correct. Uh, yeah. Vajra took you to the dead bodies from the explosion, and you learned yeah. several different things from them. Um, that Dalakar had been working on Neverember's orders, and had stolen the Stone of Galore from the Xanathar. Wild. Uh, the stone and then like three keys to open yeah, it or unlock it or something. Keys. She's got one of them on her bosoms. And then the Zents have one and the Xanathars have another, I think we figured yeah. out. That's what we think, yeah. But we don't know where like the actual thing is. Correct as well. Cool. So we know, actually, we do know where we think it is. We think it's at a place right down the street. We found the, the bloody trail led to uh, their house. So the guy that stole it off of uh, the gnome, we think we know where he is. So, just throwing that out there. Okay. Infiltration mission. So that leaves yeah. you... With a lot of information, you have returned from Castellanter Villa with a task and a promise of 50,000 gold crown, uh, gold dragons if you can find the board. Yeah, so we're tasked to find half a million to keep 50,000 of it. That's the idea. With the other yeah. 450,000 going directly to saving the souls of her children. Yeah, no deal in Harry's mind. We're fine. Why would we find it for someone else? Aren't we looking for it for ourselves? Yeah, but she'll be able to point us in the right direction, right? And then we'll just take it and kill her. Um, at this point, 
I would just say to Alistair, go ahead and place yourself in the tavern wherever you would like. The updated tavern is now on Albert Rodeo. Oh, because we're gonna start in the tavern tonight. Did you say updated? Updated yeah. tavern. It's Hold on a minute. Let's see. You're gonna see it. Oh, I gotta. It's, it's bitching. <laughs> Actually, Loading. Dead. I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna sit on the deck. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's all cleaned up. Nice flowers. It's all cleaned up. Oh my goodness! Look at this. That is fancy. Pretty good. <laughs> all right. Victor's at the piano, of course. Him, a famous piano yeah. man. Well, he doesn't know how to play. He's just fascinated by the. It makes sound, and he's never seen one before. Maybe he's admiring the fancy woodwork. Alistair leans coolly against the fireplace. <laughs> All right, so uh, what is everybody doing in the tavern? It's it's after the tavern is closed. If you guys want to have conversation, that's fine. If not, we can try to move forward from here. Um, I will begin with a, your at your discretion though i'm still catching up so you, you guys do whatever and i'll uh i'll roll with it ah ronin nothing's happened yet okay hey. uh we're just at the bar at the bar well i heard and nick so... talking about something before uh before that so we giving a little recap to... we were summarizing what yeah. happened before yeah it's been two weeks True, yeah. So, yeah, um, what could we do at the bar? Victor, play us a beat. <laughs> well, I mean, wait, hold, hold up, let's see. Victor doesn't actually know how to play, uh, but he'll, he'll see what happens. So, somehow we play something. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime cat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So as you guys are hanging out, uh, I will go ahead and just jump in with this. Um, go ahead and give me a per. Ooh, who's got the highest perception? Passive perception. Maybe me. I have a high wisdom. That Cleric. Um, Aerith, you see a figure dart past down into your courtyard and then run up to the door of the bar and began banging on the bar saying quick let me in let me in damn it uh alistair so, you recognize a voice so, so there's someone banging on the door mm -hmm. there is an individual banging on the door both softly but aggressively at the same time alistair uh would uh perk up slide over the door Oh, I know who this is. And uh, open it up. Okay, and you got it. In stumbles the figure of Erstel Floxen. Uh, My man. He gave, gave you the task. And he quickly goes, quick, I, I gotta hide. I gotta hide. And he runs and he goes around behind the bar and he sees Grub Grub. He's like, Jesus Christ, a fucking goblin. And he gets back down behind the bar and he's basically hiding. And Grub Grub just like kind of looks down at him. He's like washing out a glass with like a dirty rag and he's just like continues to do it, puts it down, goes to the next glass, doesn't even really pay attention to Erstel. Um, as this is happening, two guards with the livery of House Grailhund come running around the corner. They're like, I think he went this way. And you can see them running down the steps and they, they begin to run past the tavern. And then one of them's like, wait, I'll check the tavern. And they like begin to run up as well. Um, I assume you closed the door after you let him in? We'll say I'm closing the door as this gentleman is rushing up to it. <laughs> okay. He's like, hold on, hold on. And this guy's like, what? What now? He's like, no, them at the door, the tavern. Hold on. Can I have your moment? Oh, hey there, mate. What can I do for you? Did you see a man? It looked like he was injured. He ran past here. Uh, I did see someone. He was running uh, that way. And he points, uh, Alistair points to the left towards the other guard. Okay, make a deception check. 
Deception. Dirty 20. Okay. Uh, the guard looks at you and goes, oh, thanks, man. And they be both begin to just run right off. Um, without missing a beat, you point them in the wrong direction, and they both just sprint right off. Um, after about 30, 45 seconds, Ursula goes, is the coast clear? A lot clearer yeah. than it was before. It's clear now. <laughs> who Who are you? He limps back out from behind the bar. And Grub Grub puts down another glass, grabs another one, continues going with the same dirty rag, looks at the rag, realizes how filthy it is, and then, oh, new rag. Grabs a new rag, starts with the glasses once again. Um, he so, lo, uh, Ursula Floxen is limping. There are broken ropes on his wrists and his ankles. His leg appears to be bleeding rather heavily, and now you can see that there is a slight trail of blood that he left through the tavern behind himself. And he goes, I'm an associate of Alistair's. But... Alistair? He's one of my mates. He looks like he's got in a bit of trouble. Someone uh, maybe grab him a, a cloth for his wound? Yeah, I'd go, uh, I'd use my new healer healing action, and I'd go uh, try to tend to his wound. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, what does that give you? Um, as an action, I can spend one use of a healer's kit to tend to a creature and restore 1d6 plus 4 hit points. Yeah, go plus, for it. Plus additional HP equal to the creature's maximum number of hit dice. Go for it. Pretty sweet. Anyway, this is, uh, so nine, this is my associate. 9 plus whatever the maximum number of hit dice are. Aristotle. And, uh, we we met recently, a couple ten days or so ago, I believe, and uh, yeah, it looks like he's got himself in a bit of trouble. Also, uh, Grub Grub, real quick, you should why don't you go uh, clean up any blood trail that may have been leading into our into our building, cover his tracks for him. Oh, Grub Grub will do, and he like grabs a mop and he's like just cleaning away. He, I mean, he was gonna clean a, a bunch of this area anyways. There's spilled beer on the floor and stuff. Um. I meant, like, him go outside, because if he was bleeding, he might have left a trail, like, right to our door. Oh, okay, so Grub Grub goes and checks outside, um, and you can he hear him sort of mucking around out there. Um, your healing gives him enough to sit down on one of the stools at the bar, um, and in between handing him a little bit of liquor, applying some, uh, some stuff to the wound, you stop the bleeding. Uh, and he's appreciative of it. Um, he looks at you all and he goes, Thank you so much for for letting me stay here for a moment. Um, and he looks Alistair dead in the eyes and he goes, You know, I think I might need to call in that, uh, that task that you did for me now. Oh, you don't say. Well, <laughs> to be clear, <clears throat> I didn't come back empty-handed. And he, uh, Reaches into his pack and shows him the different items he grabbed from the Grail Hunt house. It was and, like the, uh, it's like the ritual paraphernalia or something like that. I have it written down my my notes here. I believe it was robes and a mask. Yeah, and maybe they, even a dagger. Um, possibly. I got I I took that and then also in his his like study. I took something out of there too. What did I take? Hold on. Going into the notes. Ursul Floxen will try to take them from you if you let him. Um, before I, as he goes to grab him, I would sort of slide away and just be like, "What's uh? I believe we have an accord," and sort of give him, give him squinty eyes. <laughs> he kind of looks at you. And he's like, "That's fair. That's fair." And you're putting me up here for the moment. All right, <laughs> how's this? I'm going to get a group of men, and I'm going to pay them back for the, what they've done to me here. You see, they've been holding me hostage for quite a few days now. And what happened? Was it was that the uh, the Grail Hunts who did this? It was. And he oh, spits shit. onto your floor at this point, and he goes, Bastards, a lot of them. 
did uh did you happen to see some sort of stone or something brought in recently? Uh roll persuasion check. Persuasion. Yeah, I don't know if you've uh you've heard, but there was an explosion over here recently. Right outside of a fucking tavern. And uh, uh and there was actually a witness who saw somebody uh, go to the body, pick something up, and then run away. And it turns out, um, I went, I went looking after him, and uh, I came up, came up pretty much blank. And then on my way home, I did happen to notice a bit of blood on uh, the Grail Hunt's doorknob, and uh, I was suspecting perhaps maybe they were involved in the explosion, since the person who uh, who took the thing. But the item off of the uh, one of the dead bodies, who was like the main culprit, they were uh, they were injured apparently, as far as the uh, witnesses reported. And as you're saying this, he pulls back his sleeves, and you can see burn marks all over his arms. Is that you, Foxin? Uh, it was me. Sounds like you figured out a lot of bits of uh, everything going on. Frankly, what the? Why are you blowing up our spot, mate? No, no, no. I didn't. I. I was tried to be blown up, fucker. Oh, they they were going after you. Okay. No, no well, I, I got caught in the crossfire. I think they understood that I was trying to double cross them. Ah. Uh. And that's why they've been holding me captive. Look, they have these these things. They're called nimble rights. Um, Harold, you would recognize nimble rights. They are traditionally a part of like the parades in the spring. Um, the uh, how how do I describe this? Uh, they are in the Day of Wonders parade, and and nimble rites are uh, automatons that are kind of like clockwork automatons, um, and they are in relation to the Temple of Gond within Waterdeep. They make them there, um, and so Erstel Floxen says, "Look, they got this nimble rite. My understanding is he's the one who threw the fireball at us. Um, I was able to." F dash through the, the flames and the smoke, grab the stone off of that dead gnome's body, and as I brought it back into into the Grailhuns, their gods were sicked upon me. I took the stone off me, I've been locked up ever since, and he he's like taking the ropes off his feet and hands at this point. What what were you doing in the Grailhuns place? Or why'd you run there? <sighs> My master... And you can see, once again, the, the snake tattoo on yeah. his hand. My master made a deal with them that we could be there and use their place as a base of operations for the time being. I think, and this is what you were providing me with, we think that they were double-crossing us. What you're able to give me is, at the very least, collateral to confront them with so that... Maybe they'd only work for us, or that they'll give us the stone, or frankly, anything. I don't really care. But at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my master, get some more men, and we're going to raid their fucking manor. You can see that there's a sinister gl glimmer in his eyes as he's saying this. So, we're kicking down doors is what it sounds like. Oh, I don't care what you do. I know exactly what I'm doing. Well, I will warn you. That uh, as sinister as these people are, there may be innocence involved. I heard children there when I was uh, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> he kind of just gives them a wink, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, I, I mean, um, look, I'll do what I have to, but uh, I'll make sure the kids are okay." Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not just going in there slitting throats. Uh, I mean. Frankly, that might be exactly what happens. I'll just... Ah, oh, shit. Uh, Alistair looks at the boys to gauge the reaction after hearing this uh, brutality <laughs> coming out of Floxen. Well, as soon as Victor heard uh... the word slitting throats, he would stop playing music, and that's when he would actually start <laughs> listening, because before he wasn't paying attention, but he heard slitting and throats. Harry and he would look interested. at Alistair like, you brought this guy here. Look, look, guys... Foxen means well. He's just, uh... Doesn't someone he... tried to blow him up, alright? You guys would be pretty pissed off, too. <laughs> Let's kill people. 
Victor says enthusiastically. Oh, all right, well, look at that. Victor, say Victor's on board. Let's, let's fight some shit. Of Alistair, course, Alistair, Alistair goes up and <laughs> pats him on the back, <laughs> like slaps his shoulder. Hey, good on you, mate. Victor's down for anything, of course. Look, look, I, I know, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to say these, you know, they're, they're maybe not, the kids at least aren't, you know, involved, but their family, they're definitely doing some fucked up shit. And then Alistair shows the group uh, the stuff he took from them. He's like, does any of this look familiar, boys? Uh, it's like it's like the same as the shit we saw before, right? And the other, uh... it's pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. So I remember the right. rituals and that uh, where the where the werewolves were and stuff. I'm pretty sure they're involved with that. And uh, he shows them all the uh, the stuff. It's like so these aren't these aren't good people. They probably deserve whatever <laughs> he points to Flox and whatever he has planned for them. We've got your back, Alistair. Yeah, I mean, if you, you think had... it's a good idea, we're with you. And then for the part of the, the key thing, right, is like these stones. He's like, so Elster just wants to stress. We, we, we need those stones anyway. So this is just, you know. Uh, Floxen speaks up and he goes, uh, look, look, I, I appreciate your help. I really do. Um, Alistair, I will have somebody come by with 500 gold tonight. If you hand me those, you will get your gold. Um, Alistair would walk up to the guy with the hand, one one hand with the stuff in it, and the other hand to shake. And he, he wants to shake his hand before he hands it to him. And Erstel Floxen goes, I'll shake your hand and I'll do you one even better. And you can see him take out a dagger, and he begins to take it at the tattoo on his hand. And he sort of digs into the tattoo. And instead of blood coming up, black ink comes up. And you can see that as he scrapes up the tattoo off of his skin, there's another tattoo identical underneath. And you can see this tattoo begin to squirm and wiggle as he pulls it off of his hand. And it turns into a flying snake akin to the tattoo itself. And he holds it. Uh, by the head, you, uh, the way you would as like a poisonous, venomous, aggressive snake, and by the tail. And he whispers to the snake, bring 500 gold to the prestige worldwide. And he throws it, and it slithers across the floor underneath Grub Grub's legs, and then under the door and outside. And you can see it take off winged into the night. There, your gold's on the way. And he grabs your hand, and then he reaches for the gear. Uh, what uh, what was that little thing you just did there, Fox? And that was cool. Just a gift from my master. Where where uh, would I get one of those? <laughs> well, if you prove yourselves, stay out of our business over the next night or so. Maybe we can talk again. Uh, all right, my my interest is peaked. All right, Aristotle, I'll take your word for it. And Alistair gives him the stuff. Okay, he takes the stuff. He um, sort of looks at the, the the cords that he untied from his hands and his, his feet. He ties it onto himself, onto his belt, using those things. And he goes, can I at least just take like a broken bottle or something? I, ju I just need a weapon on my way out. Yeah. Alistair gives him one of his daggers. Okay. Yeah, he takes it, thanks you for it, and says, all right, I'll be on my way. The gold should be here tonight. If it's not... Let me know and I'll, and if I see you again, Alistair, and I'll make sure it's good. Make sure you give me that back. And he looks at the dagger. <laughs> <laughs> As you wish. Uh, and he goes to take his leave, unless there's anything else you guys would like. Nope. Okay. Erstel flocks and heads out into the night. What would you guys like to do? That guy was kind of sus. <laughs> yeah, Alice, who are you bringing in here? Yeah, what was that all about? Look, guys, so... <sighs> I've been meaning to tell you something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, hello. <clears throat> I've, uh... Look, alright, I've been looking to get into the city's underworld. Because, uh, you know... It's good to have friends 
in low in places. all sorts of places, right? Yeah, see, he knows. This guy knows. I'm with you. I was supporting you the whole time. Yeah. And uh, so I met this guy, Floxen, and he gave me a few tasks, and I've been doing them sort of on the side. Um, actually, you know what? Harry helped me. That's right. Uh, yeah, Harry. Harry was actually involved with one of them, the most recent one. The most and, successful uh, one. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he's, you know, it's sort of a thing. He's sort of been testing me, and I think now I finally pass a test. And uh, you know, getting in these these guys would be nothing but a good thing. Like they may have questionable methods, uh, but you know, in the end, uh, they will be a uh, a very good resource for us to have as a group. All right, and he just kind of smiles. <laughs> All right. He's like, so they're they're involved with this whole gang war thing, you know. And uh, it, it's good to have you know friends in all sorts of places, you know. Okay, I can't stress that enough. I guess if you say so. Yeah. You, you and, and our, your friends. You know, our, our, uh, you know what we're trying to do. Everything aligns. They they they're on our side. You know, they're not they're not against us. So. You have nothing like that to worry about. The more information we can gather, the better. Exactly. And plus, you know, being friends with these guys, it's going to get us a lot of gold. That's, there's nothing wrong with gold, right? <laughs> <laughs> nothing at all. Nothing at all. And besides, it's gold other than the, the half a million we're looking for. More gold. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll tell I'll tell you more when uh, we meet up with them again. All right. Well, it's been a pretty exciting day. Maybe we all hit the hay, get a good solid eight hours, start fresh in the morning. Uh -huh. I am I am tired. Yeah, why not? Yeah, let's do it. Get some long long rest in. Okay. Both uh, are. Is your is your microphone in like an aquarium? Uh, yeah. Why don't you just turn my volume up, bro? It's up all the way. He sounds fine to me. I can barely hear him. Mm, it sounds like a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been listening to your voice enough lately. <laughs> okay, so if you guys want to take full rest uh, as needed, um. And we will start with the noon day tomorrow. What what do you guys wanna do? So how how's the progress of the tunnel in uh are we at, at the We're at nineteen the, out of thirty feet. Are we are we at the beginning or end of the uh ten day right now? Uh I believe this is the beginning of the new ten day because we did the gold and everything last session. Right. Okay. Do we have like any outstanding like quests or things that like tasks or whatever that we're supposed to be working on? Well, I just I just basically got the check mark on my side quest right there. Just got to wait for the gold to show up. Oh, and it, it does show up that night with uh with somebody. How much? Five hundred. Oh. Is this Alistair's gold or is this uh? Bank gold. Uh, it's Alistair gold for right now, but I'll I'll probably give most of it to the bank. All right. How much is in the bank? Uh, about six hundred. So I have where's my I have four twenty personal gold. Ha, four twenty. Um, thousand eighty five minus four twenty. So a good bit. All right. Well, then then Alistair will kick four hundred over to the bank. Damn. There we go. Yeah, we're sitting banks in at over a thousand right now. 
Don't forget how much Alistair... Yeah. And the rest of the group with all their winnings or whatever. Yeah, Harry wants to go gamble and win money. Is that your 10-day activity? Did we did we ever... Uh, did we ever... Uh... In our la my last week's gallivanting, did we ever get any sign of our buddy there? Oh, of Floon, Floon. you did not. Oh. Floon you is know, Harry, Harry's gonna go. Um, Harry's gonna spend some time looking for Floon of the okay. week. Every now and then, going down to uh, the the, the dockyard, the sea yard. Sure. The Sea Ward, or the sea Dock Ward, ward yeah. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you can definitely do that. Uh, how about everybody else? What are you guys doing? I think I'd mostly just help with the tunnel when the boys go down there, and then sort of just be like, you know, on the prowl near the uh, near the tavern, especially after the recent uh, bombing and whatnot. Okay. Be on, be on high alert in the area. Okay. So... And and we'll we can do these individually separately, but I would ask for investigation checks from both Harold and Alistair individually, um, and then I'll just go down the list for everyone else right now. Aerith, what would you like to be doing? Aerith wants to learn how to play the piano. Okay, <laughs> you can totally do that. Nice. Um, make a performance check. Uh. Okay. You're a natural. Wait, that was an investigation. That was my investigation. Yeah. Oh. That 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 got me too, Lynch. Yeah. Alistair oh, Ryan he's a natural. Oh, he's a natural. Snap. What nice. Uh, cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, Eric, <laughs> you... sit down. Belts out Beethoven's symphony. <laughs> yeah. Um, your long-fingered, feathered hands actually fit the keys perfectly. And you just begin typing on the keys. And you've always had an affinity for a number of different things, telling the time of day based on the moon, being able to understand people's intentions. And this piano calls to you. And you go through the scales, and you begin to find a rhythm and an ability to uh, place together sounds quite quickly. And so we'll say over the course of the 10-day, you begin gaining the ability to play the piano. Um, you're putting in practice, you're enjoying it, you find that you, it comes quite naturally to you. Uh, Alistair, we're going to take your investigation check dead last. Uh, Harold, can you roll yours as well right now? Oh, and the most important, and important one, then. Victor Volknar <laughs> and Susanu, what are you guys going to do? Uh, I guess I just... Let's see, I guess I finished all my potion stuff, so my next thing is I wanted to learn how to use a shield. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you practicing with anyone in how, particular, how would, or how would that work? Like, is it is there like a feat I would have to take, or could it just like through practice and training or whatever just get like the proficiency in it? Through practice and training, you would gain the proficiency in it. Okay. Um, right. Oh, right now, have, is there anyone in the party know how to use shields? I assume Victor should. Yeah, Victor and Volknar. I guess Zeus and you would ask those guys if they uh want to teach little their little bird friend how to use a, a little shield. Comes up to them with like a pot lid that I fashioned yes. into like a makeshift shield. I was thinking like that or like a barrel, like the top of a barrel. Yes, bar top of a barrel. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Are you just gonna join us in the basement at night now? Yeah. You should have Grub Grub down there as your yeah, training I partner. To, I might have to like train with Grub Grub because he's my size. I'm pretty sure if like you guys take a swing at me. Even if I walked with the shield, I had like my little bird bones would just like crumple. Just cut you in half. Uh, what is your strength actually, Zusanu? Let me check something. Uh, eight. Yeah. Uh, ooh, does that have a sh? So there is no strength minimum, I believe, for a shield. So I'm not gonna worry too much on this, but. Hey, you're okay. Um, what I will say is this. Go ahead and give me a... Hmm. If you can convince mm -hmm. me of a roll, I will let you roll it. 
my inkling is to say you should be rolling a strength check for this. That feels right. I'll roll even if the with a minus one. Okay. Halster's got minus one too. Eh, if it doesn't work, I can always think of something else to work on. How do I? There it is. Ooh, a ten. Okay. So you you spend the week at first sparring with Grub Grub, and Grub Grub during his breaks between manning the bar helping with the tunnel, whatever it might be, um, is using a crowbar against you because he's also <laughs> practicing using quote-unquote what he calls weapons, uh, which are actually just tools. Um, and and so he's using a crowbar against your barrel top. Uh, the two of you are clumsy and not exactly practice at this, but that's the point of this. Um, you're beginning to get the hang of it. So we'll tack it on to like, your, your learning. And I believe it. I said it was like a similar time frame for that this is like some of my favorite imagery of the whole campaign <laughs> <laughs> giant duck and a goblin just like smacking each other with, <laughs> with a crowbar yeah and a yeah, yeah. Oh, Volcar and Vickner just like take bets on who's gonna win <laughs> so Volcar and Victor what are you guys doing uh Victor's working on a tunnel and his longbow, and he'll need some time to interact with Volknar at some point. Gotcha. Um, go ahead and give me a roll for the tunnel, if you're doing that. And then the longbow, I believe that's a roll as well. Uh, yeah, so strength for the tunnel? Yep. I'm actually just looking back through the rolls to see if I can find what there, you did. The, I think for the longbow, I rolled... A seven on wisdom, so you said it would take an extra ten day, and like gotcha. so, this would be like the third ten day I've been working on that. I actually think the longbow would be done; that you would finish it at this point. Nice, big boy with the big bow. And for <laughs> the tunnel, you just got the thirteen. Uh, you're able yeah. to add another like three feet, I would say. Yeah. So it's 22 out of, I think I have 22 out of 30 at this point. Yeah. Victor, we should set up a, uh, like some targets or something up on the roof. To practice archery with. And Volknar, what are you doing? Uh, I guess I'll just be working on the tunnel and waiting for Victor. Okay, go ahead and give a roll for that as well then. Eleven. Okay, I'm gonna say it only adds another foot. So you guys are at twenty-three feet with this. Um, and pick your time for whatever. Oh yeah, um, Volknar. Hola. Hey, what do you uh, what do you think about this uh, city life? What do you mean the city life? Like living in the city? Yeah, we live in a city. It's weird. Uh, it's different from the military days. Yeah. Yo, you're in the military? You're a military guy? Nice. Yeah. I I spent some time as a soldier myself. It didn't go well. But anyway, uh, w um, there's a lot of these like gangs and stuff uh, out there. There was a bomb explosion and stuff. So I yeah, I was thinking. Uh, we should go out one night and uh, maybe do like a little uh, neighborhood watch or something. Find some, uh, find some of these bad guys and just like beat them up. Cause beat up some, beat up some teenagers. Yeah, it's like I, I really need to beat someone up. This, all this uh, indoor stuff. Talking to people, it's uh, you know. Yeah, you want to uh, go? You want to go out on the streets and see if we can beat somebody up? Yeah, I would. I would think we'd have to wear some <laughs> kind of like disguise or something so like if people saw us they wouldn't be like know who we are we don't want to bring trouble back to the tavern or anything but we want to you know, like serve justice or something you know i mean i've seen a lot of bad people in uh, my time and uh you know i'm tired of bad people and uh they need to they need to pay for their bad deeds you know didn't we get uh didn't alistair get some sort of robes that we might be able to wear i think i think he gave those to the guy didn't he wasn't that like Maybe. yeah but but we do have those robes from the devil worshippers yeah, do you think they're fancy? Like, can we discuss? Well, or, or I mean, and then just turn them into capes. Something. 
Yeah, I was thinking, you you know, we're kind of low. I'm working on a budget at the moment. So maybe you just put on whatever as like a disguise. And then, you know, once they get more money, it can buy like a cloak or something, something fancy. And then like, you know, put something over our faces. So we like, you know. I like how you say once we get more money, we're mean. Meanwhile, we're sitting on like over a thousand gold. Well, I mean, you know, very willing to share. I know. I know. I just uh, get you guys like a Batman. (laughs) But yeah. So, but is this you've been in a city before, right, Volknar? Uh, yeah. What do you, what is their stance on uh, killing people? Uh, it's not not good. Not good. All right. Not generally for him to con. We have the charter somewhere in our notes. Okay. Notes well, maybe sometime you can read it to me. Or... Okay. <laughs> I never sign that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So. I mean, so if we can't kill people, maybe we should get some, like, bludgeon weapons or something so we're not, like, just cutting people up and, like, uh, you know, maybe I could get, like, a flail or something. And then there's this, you know, there's a two-handed weapon that might be your style called a maul. Like, uh, and we can just, like, knock people out instead of murdering them. And then, uh... Got a crowbar you could borrow. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, you know, we'll... Just something to think about. I mean, it'd be fun to just beat the shit out of people because you know i it makes me it like really it's a, like a stress reliever for me uh yeah i, I hear that yeah yeah I like yeah beating up people up too so. all right cool um, yeah let's get some, let's get some bludgeoning weapons yeah totally <laughs> all, right. all right speaking of combat how does uh <laughs> if we wanted to like take a trip into the awning portal just to check it out how would that work uh that isn't that just like a dungeon in a hole in the ground yeah and that could totally work um you gotta give your gold to Gurnan to go down into it and then to come back up you have to place a gold into the bucket before he brings you back up um but the idea is that you are sent down and you know some adventurers don't come back or or maybe sometimes only half a group comes back uh it is known to be incredibly dangerous but you could absolutely go do that if you so wished at this point What does the party think? I think, I think on the surface it sounds great. Great, but, a little like dungeon adventure. But realistically, um, our combat itch. DM says you know the group may not return whole. Yeah. And uh, that know. was that that explanation was full of little warnings. <laughs> uh, I, I, so let me let me talk out a game for a moment and just say like, if you guys want to go down, so I I have random encounters prepared in Waterdeep. If you ever are looking for like fights and or stuff all you got to do is say like i want to go do look for a scrap basically um in terms of going down in the yawning portal i can toss together something pretty quickly if you guys actually wanted to go do that so that is not off limits um in terms of like the deadliness of it or whatever like that's a different question but I would say, like, don't feel like we can't. It, you know what I mean? If your characters are interested in going to doing in doing something, like we can make that happen. I think it could be kind of fun, or maybe like wait, like maybe a level or two, and then go down. Maybe, yeah. I feel like if Alistair and the rest of the group felt stronger, maybe. We're level three, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I'd I'd rather just go pick a fight elsewhere. To be to be fair, like yeah, the portal sounds cool, but right now at least it wouldn't, and it doesn't make sense for me, like my character, to send himself down that hole. <laughs> well, I'm 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 kind of with Victor. I'm feeling like the itch for some combat. How's this? Let's say, so Victor and Volknar, you guys were talking about potentially walking around looking for a fight on some evening. Is that right? Yeah, like a like a neighborhood watch kind of deal. We're not like just going to beat up be some... Vigilantes. You know, I did at one point think, oh, what if I abducted a homeless guy and took him back and just like tortured him and just like killed him. But then I was like, that'd be very <laughs> controversial. I don't know how that goes in D&D. So now I was like, okay, well, let's, you know, beat up someone who deserves it. And then maybe society won't care as much. But yeah. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. So, so I'll say this. Um, that was somebody... very well thought out. <laughs> this man somebody... stabbed his own father last uh, last time we played yeah. together. Keep that in mind. Somebody comes running by the tavern and they're like, 
there's there's some guy over in an alley. He's cornered by a bunch of Zents. Uh, so it looks like they're they're gonna kill him. Oh shit! What? Prestige worldwide. Roll out. Assemble. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Right. So I will switch the map over to. We're gonna go back to that alley that you guys fought a bunch of stuff in. And when you arrive at the alley, you see a woman clad f in full armor uh, oh, no. with a great sword surrounded by seven zents and actually an individual who you've seen at the, or sorry, seven, seven thug guys, bandit guys, <laughs> and a woman who you recognize from the Yawning Portal Tavern, actually, at one point in time. Uh, the woman who was called out by... The dwarfish man who you killed in the Xanathar Guild hideout, as a matter of fact. And she is stepping up to the woman and saying, Oh, we, don't worry. We'll slit your throat as well and take your money and your sword. Right. You hear that, Volo? Your life is ours. Oh, shit. isn't Volo one of our friends? <laughs> He's the one who gave us the fucking tavern, bro. Oh, shit. We gotta save him. Okay, so go ahead and roll initiative. And I will actually, I actually have a, we're going to switch over to 20 a long counter for this. <laughs> One. Damn, Harold. <laughs> Initiatives. No biggie. Wait, my 11 is good? <laughs> right. <laughs> Victor, don't you have like a plus forty-seven to initiative? How'd you get? A uh, I rolled a two, so I got a seven. I know. Yeah. Explain it. yeah. All right, so I'm going to how do I do this? Moon man, did you roll a twenty? Oh, you did. Uh, yep. That's your second twenty tonight. Yep. Is that second twenty oh. in a row? Twenty is a hot. We know who's rolling yeah. for a gold at the end of the uh, 10 day. Yeah, yeah. If we need anything tonight, it's him. <laughs> unless unless he just exhausted all of them, and that's it. Yeah, maybe. Is that how yeah, it works? Once. Yeah, it might be all once for the rest of the night for him. Sorry, I might need to just switch. Yeah, to... we'll see. Okay, so Alistair, Zeus knew you actually got an 8. So I actually have like a combat tracker up that I'm working with. Which is pretty oh. sweet because it's like built into D and D Beyond. New new toys. Yeah. Uh, Harold, you got a three. A three. Everybody point and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. The Zeus knew was an eight as well. Really like how grouped up all those guys are right now. I wish I rolled higher. They're just begging for a fireball. Right? My little baby fireball spell. Do you still have yours, um, Harold? Yep. Save them. I got, I okay, got so a couple just... of them. Uh, Aerith, you're going to go first. Okay. You can go ahead and do whatever you go. wish. Okay, okay. Um I think I'm gonna So none of these people look very unique, do they? Uh no they do not. They are all generic Zentarim bandits. But the Orcish it's, lady it's, from the first for the night. Lady. Yeah. yeah. Um uh I guess I guess I'll cast my first spell that night. Guiding bolt. Okay. Okay. Twenty two. Uh, that is a hit. And 19 damage. 
Woo wee. Damn, is that right? On to which one? Uh, um. How about the How about the the orc lady or whatever? Sure. 19 damage and it gives advantage to anyone else attacking her next? Correct. Cool. Counting bolts great. It does a lot of damage too. With a roll like that it sure does. Yeah, that was a good roll. Yeah, and so uh, your guiding bolt zips into uh, her back, and she turns and she goes, "What the fuck? Oh fuck! Get these guys! G get them, bull! Get them all!" Uh, and with that, uh, it is now the bandits' turns, and uh, the first one. Let me just bring up. Oh wow, this is so handy. Can you guys see that roll? No. Perfect. Um, so this first one, let me just see the distance here. You so roll their initiative can... with just like one button? Yeah. I oh, will set that's... up the account encounter ahead of time. That's cool. Um, so they're all going to run up, and some of them actually have daggers that they will end up throwing. These guys will run up. Uh, they will stay here to fight off the knight. Um, and uh, the first one is actually just going to swing immediately at Aerith. And uh, it got a 20. Not a natural, a dirty 20. Uh, so I assume that hits? Yep. Cool. And that's going to be four points of damage with a mace. Okay. Uh but all of so I'm just having them all go in sequence. So that was the first one. The second one will shoot a crossbow as they run up, and it will shoot it at Volknar. Um, Twenty-one to hit, and it's going to be five points of damage to Volknar. Dang. Uh, the next one is going to run up and try to hit. Let's see, uh, I'm actually just going to roll some crossbow attacks, and it's going to be against the entire front line here. So it's going to be uh, Zeusanu, then Alistair, then Victor, and Harold, you're sort of off to the side, so you're probably kind of safe. So we'll go with uh, Alistair, that is a six, so that's going to be a miss. Um, that's a natural 20, and so down the line... Oh, sorry, Zeusanu, that's going to be a natural 20 against you. Oh, damn. And that's going to be... Uh... <laughs> I rolled a natural one, so it's only going to be two points of damage. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then Victor, uh, it's going to be a uh, 10, so that's a miss. And then over to, let's see, over to Volknar, this is going to be a 20, so that's a hit. Oh, damn. And it's going to be 10 points of damage with that crossbow Ooh. bolt. Damn. And so they're either running up and doing that and then dropping their crossbows and pulling out their mace, or like the guy who ran up against Aerith immediately ran up with the mace and just attacked. Um, the last one is going to do an attack against the knight. It's actually probably going to be a hit. Oh, that's a miss. And so that brings us to the bandit captain. Uh, sh you guys all rolled pretty low. Um, the bandit captain's going to attack the knight with a scimitar. They're making multiple attacks. That's a miss. That's a hit. Oh, wow. That was a critical hit. Uh, so they're actually going to do about 15 points of damage to the knight. Um, and they're squaring up with the knight primarily. And that brings us in turn order all the way to Sorry. Alistair. <clears throat> so right now in front of us, 
only uh, this one is like engaged with with the Birdman's. Correct. Um. Okay. I think I'm going to. I'm gonna run up. Uh, Naruto style. Nice. Okay. Uh, up to the Birdman's. And then, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, look out! And then I'm gonna attack the one attacking him. Okay. Wow! Thanks for the warning. <laughs> so, twenty twenty three to hit. Got the uh, nine plus the sneak attacks. It gives me. 16 total damage. Okay, and, uh, 16 damage. So, just sort of pulled out my rapier and pierced him real quick, and then as I did that, all in one motion, I tumbled backwards. Disengage. Gotcha. Uh, and so he takes 16 damage. Uh, and is that your full turn? Yep. So that brings us to Victor. What would you like to do? Uh, hmm, how what's the distance? Uh, what's it measuring? Distance is that's a lot of feats. So is it oh, a scale? Uh, to fight the knight or yeah. fight the bandit captain? It's like fifty feet. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I assume other people in the party have like rain stuff where they can. Does anybody else plan on going after that? The uh, other two people, because I was gonna uh, send my like my little summon up there as backup while I make my way up there. I mean, I I had to defend the Birdman first thing, you know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, did uh, you do any damage to that one? Uh, yes, and I I recorded it in D D Beyond, but I'll put it here as well. Okay. Well, no matter what I do, I'm definitely attacking uh, the bandit to the far right uh, with a longsword attack. So that was an 18 hit. Yes, it does. All right. So we'll do some slash. And then... Um, it's been so long since I've done these things. <laughs> like, what? So I want to trip them. So that's another, was it a D8, I think? Your superior. That's right. right. Yeah, and then he has to do pass like a 14 strength, I think. Yep. So D8. He did not pass that. Okay, so he takes another two. So we're at 14 damage on him. Um, I think I'll do... Yeah, I'll do action surge and just go for another attack on this guy. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Damn. Yeah, yeah. So I get uh, yeah. advantage on it. Yeah. Uh, that shit's so cool, man. Why can't I see advantage? Oh, there it is. It's like oh. I completely wreck this guy. Okay, so. That's a hit. Yeah. And then. Another eight. So. 22. I'm gonna save. Yeah, I'm not gonna use it anymore. Let's see if he's dead. So is this guy? Is he like still alive? Uh, he is still alive. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't trip him again. I will attack him menacingly okay. and use another to die on him. Uh. So two more damage. Oh man. But yeah, so now uh, he has since a menacing attack, so uh, he has to do a wisdom save of 14, or else he's afraid of me, I think. He rolled a natural four. Okay, so he's afraid of me and he's on the ground. <laughs> try to crawl away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that your full turn, or do you want to like, move uh... beyond him? You know what? I think we'll uh, since I don't take an attack of opportunity since he's on the ground, right? 
So I was actually just about to check that. I'm checking for the frightened condition really fast. Yeah, I don't know if he uh, can attack you technically because he's scared. Yes, he can't move willingly closer. I'm going to say if he attacks you, it's going to be with double dis triple disadvantage because he's prone and because he's frightened. Okay, so I'll... He can take an attack of opportunity, but it's just... I'll, I'll let him take his attack of opportunity and step over him and uh, get ready to <laughs> fight the other guy that I'm next to. It's like, I'm done with this fucking guy. <laughs> Victor, you're, uh, you're right, in the, right in the way of my spell now. He can duck. And okay, you can so fly. He, he definitely misses. Um, he got a he got a two. Um, so yeah, your movement is unimpeded, and you can go wherever you like. Yeah, I'm just gonna get ready to attack that guy. Okay. And uh, I will record all that damage here. I believe you did. It was. Sword bloody, you just look menacing 24. at the next man. Yeah. Four points of damage. Yeah, you basically like strike him down. He's like crawling away from you at this point, and you step over his body menacingly towards the other guy as you kick the cudgel away from you as it comes to try to like strike at your ankles. Uh that brings us to Volknar. What would you like to do? Um I will first enter in rage. Nice. Yeah, I'll get plus two so melee fucking damage. Mad. You know, I just got hit with 15 points of damage. I'm not fucking happy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do about it, man? What, what did you get hit with? Did, was it an arrow? A crossbow and oh. then a dagger, I think. Oh, well, you for sure got to take out the bolt, like, you, you know, like a madman. Pull oh. it out. Yeah. You're supposed to leave it in. Snap it in half. Well, you're a madman. You're raging. You're angry. I'm not. I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> no, he just flexes. It. He just flexes and it comes out. Yeah, I flex and it pops out. <laughs> right, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna run up. Great axe in hand. Okay. And I'm gonna go. You know, attack the dude that's already got damage next to A. A. Roth. Gotcha. And I'll be like, "Don't hurt A. A. Roth." <laughs> and I'll scream it. And then I will swim my great axe at him. It's Aerith. It's Aerith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. Seven doesn't hit, does it? No, that is a miss. Sorry. Is that your full turn? Or is, um, is there something well, else I to mean, do? I got like a frenzy attack. Can I do a bonus? Action. I'll let you. I'll let you have taken that as like a frenzy, which gives you advantage, I assume. Um, while in a frenzy, you can make a single melee weapon attack as a bonus action on each of your turns after this one. Uh, so I just roll again. Yeah. With advantage. Yep. Or uh, only if you're attacking recklessly. Is that like one of your abilities? 22. There we go. Okay, that's a hit. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> you down him. And and go ahead and describe your kill. Um, I just swing my great axe right at his neck and his head pops off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, he's dead. That guy is D-E-D. -E -D. Um, brings us to Zeusanu. What would you like to do? I, I'm going to, let's see, fly up to one of the roofs. I guess I'll go. How, uh, how tall are the roofs? Like 20 feet high, 10 feet high? Uh, they're about 15. Like it's 15 at the lip and 20 to 25 feet high at the peak. Okay, so 30 feet, plus, so that'll get me, do I have 50 feet flying? So I'll go up here, 
And then I'm going to cast my Shatter spell. Let me figure out the best place to do it, not to hit the boys. It's so like an so earthquake? Like, if I do it, like, here, I can, yeah, hit, yeah, yeah. I can hit these guys and still not hit the boys. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So I cast Shatter. So they have to make a DC 14 con saving throw. Or take okay. 11 damage and half damage on a save. So let's see. Let's well, we can see thing. that one. Nice. Yeah. So the first guy made it. Uh, the second guy. That's really cool. Third. So the first guy, second guy, third, fourth. Oh wow, these guys are like rolling really well. Oh, these bastards. Only one of them took full damage. So there's five, right? Oh, A, this one of them's dead, right? This oh yeah, yeah. sorry, one, one of them's dead. You're totally right. So it was the first four. Um, so yeah, only one of them took full damage, you're right. I'm also going to summon my little tentacle buddy right next to the knight. And as I do it, I'm going to yell out to the knight. Be like, he's a friend. He's there to help you. Gotcha. And then my tentacle buddy is going to attack the orcish knight lady. Okay. Oh, that was damage. I had to roll hit first. Uh, 15 to hit. Uh, that is on the bandit, Captain. That is actually a hit. Yeah, so she takes 10 cold damage. 10 cold damage. And her speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start oh, of the next turn. Gotcha. And uh, she is down to this... Oh, doesn't he? Didn't he also get some sort of advantage or something? Oh yeah, you had, adva oh, yeah, technically advantage, had advantage. Oh yeah, Yeah, I'm sure you could crit. Ugh, dirty twenty-two. Pretty good. That's a pretty good turn. All right. And then so I guess I think... I'll, I'll duck down and see. I get as much cover as I can on the rooftop. Not much, but a bit. Um, that brings us to the knight. Uh, she will turn first and foremost to the non-bandit captain bandit, and she will take two melee attacks. Let's see if these land as well, but so it's going to be twenty-three points of damage. That first one is a hit. That second one is a natural 20, so oh, it's actually going damn. to be enough to kill him. It's m almost exactly enough to kill him, but this uh, last bandit, I believe it's bandit G that I haven't like actually put up. Yeah, so this guy is dead. Uh, and she, with swings of her sword, actually lops off both of his arms, and he sort of like falls down like club limp on the ground, bleeding out very quickly. Uh, and she squares up, ready to take on the bandit captain once again. And she uses the, the interjection of your little tentacle guy to do this, specifically Susanoo. Uh, that brings us to Harold. Harold is going to use Ice Knife. <laughs> uh, so Harry's going to... I'm over here and cast uh, Ice Knife on whatever this guy is. So the purple one has taken damage, it looks like. So I'll try to... Um, He's prone as well. It. He's prone. Wouldn't you hit Victor, um, though? Uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot... Maybe a little bit. I'm gonna shoot at uh. 
But I think I can actually avoid... That. Don't you have sculpt spells? I do, yeah. Oh, there you yeah. go. If it's an evocation spell, then you can sculpt it around. Okay, I Victor. believe... Yeah. That even is on, so the, uh, even on the even on explosion one. I think yep. the AoE would be best, uh, you know. Yeah, that's what I was looking at him. All right, so I'm going to shoot it, ice knife it, the I E, I okay. guess, and hope for splash damage on the other guys. Battleship E6. I think they're close enough to, to hit, yeah. hit them. If I hit them. So let's see. All right, so ice knife is... Oh, it is a roll. All right, cool. Uh, I got a 22. That is more than enough to hit. All right, then it will do four damage. And you're doing that on E? Yep. Okay. Uh, and then... That is a hit. Takes four yeah. damage. So four, um, and then it would be and, dexterity. And there's an explosion of icy shards, or shrapnel. Yeah. They have to succeed on a deck saving throw or take 2d6 cold oh, I lost damage. Sound. Sorry, guys. Give me a moment. Is that is that a level one? Yeah. Pretty sick for level one. And the first the first roll is. Is uh how much is it like a D six damage? Yeah, if I can I can upcast it to D six damages. It's a it's a D ten for like the first one, then two D six. Oh D ten, okay. Explosion. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Just for like soul dirty spell. For, a, for a level one. And it's area of effect, right? Yeah. That's that's the kicker. Yeah, two D six. Because guiding bolt don't save a deck. Guiding Bolt can do a uh, potential 24 damage, but it's a uh, single target. There we go, I'm back. Sorry. So this is only... Well, 22 would be max on this. But anyway. Yep, so four damage, and then they gotta take... They gotta do a deck saving throw, but it doesn't say what the save is. It's, so it's, it's uh, your save. Spell save, yeah. Oh. It right in the Which description. Is... Uh, yeah, 14. Okay. Oh, 14, yeah. Otherwise, they take 2d6. They take half damage if they fail? No, so it's all or nothing. And it would uh, be 7 on them if they fail. Okay. okay, so the guy who was prone fails his save and he dies yeah. <laughs> um the other the the one who is not hit by the ice knife actually takes the shrapnel damage whereas the guy that you attacked primarily does not okay that's pretty good take it we'll take it and then uh harry will uh barrel roll over here and duck behind cover Okay. They go get them, big boys. Uh, that brings us to top of the order. Aerith, what would you like to do? Um, I'd like to cast a spell at the orc lady again. Uh, make it close enough. What spell? Uh, you are. Okay. Um, guiding Bolt. Oh, yeah. That's got 120. Twelve? I don't imagine that hits. Uh, Twelve does not hit on the Orc Lady. That's correct. Damn. Is there anything else you would like to do for your turn? I did my thing. I did the I did the spell thing. Uh Yeah, I, I think I'm good. Okay. Uh next in the order, that guy's dead. Alright, these guys are going to begin closing ranks on you. 
Um, he's dead. This guy will move over to Victor because he recognizes that you are a serious threat uh, and begin to try to wail on you. He actually has advantage because he has pack tactics. And so he's going to roll twice here. These guys and are like dogs. Miss. He kind misses. Of... Uh, I'll, can I use uh, repost as a like, reaction? You can. Yeah, we'll do that. And uh, So do I have to swing for it? I have to like... How does yeah, that work? Make an attack roll. An attack roll, okay. Ah, got a nine. Does it still that is... Does it still count as using one of the superiority dice? It does, yes. Okay. Well, it's my first time using it. And so it's a cool move. Attempt to yeah. block off their attack and hurt them back, but it, it, it doesn't come off successfully. Um, the second guy who's right next to him also has back tactics, and so he will roll as well at advantage does a 17 hit uh it does not okay uh and again they both fail to do any damage to you um embarrassing for them they had advantage (laughs) (laughs) i mean anything other than like a nat 20 misses victor pretty much yeah what's your ac uh 19 Oh my god. It's pretty <laughs> wild. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, right. Um this guy we're gonna go to E. He is going to attack oh gosh, who does he attack and why? Uh he's gonna try to gang up on Victor as well. They are not <laughs> thrilled with the fact that they are missing him. Uh at advantage again. Okay, so 23 is going to hit. His shield is just so strong. And I rolled natural one. So you take three points of damage from him. Okay. Uh, going to F. He will attack Volknar. Uh, this is going to be just a solo attack roll. Brutal. That is a miss. Um, does he attack twice? He does attack twice. An 18? Nope. Does an 18 hit? Yeah, EC 15. Okay. So you're going to take six points of damage from that. Um, and he will actually kind of move to get closer to his friends, but not leave your range. I'll actually just move this dead guy. Uh, so he's just trying to get like closer to his range, but not necessarily leave your range. Um, that brings us to, in the turn order, the bandit captain. Uh, she's just going to take some attacks on the knight. That's a hit. That's a miss. That's a miss. <laughs> she barely does any damage to the knight. Uh, and that brings us to Alistair. What would you like to do? Alistair, seeing his friend surrounded, <laughs> knows what to do. He runs in. And uh, as he quickly runs up to Victor, he turns around, and they do a back-to-back pose. And then he goes in for the strike on E. Okay. Okay. Alistair rolls a 12. That is a hit. Oh! <laughs> nice! Well, a sneak attack. That... Oh, I know, I know. I just didn't uh, expect to hit with a 12. <laughs> okay, so 9 damage. And then the sneak. Uh, 15. Uh, on E? On E. Describe your kill. Um, so Alistair quickly, you know, as he did his move back-to-back Victor, he... Uh, one one motion pulls the rapier out and then just stabs him in the heart, and then just just as quick tucks it back in the sheath, and continues to pose with Victor. <laughs> okay, this guy is out of the fight. Um, is there anything else you would like to do with your turn? 
Uh, <coughs> nope. Just posing, uh, you know, getting his back, you know, literally and figuratively. Gotcha. Um, going next to Victor, what would you like to do? Uh, Victor is going to lick his wound and then uh, go. F- I'm gonna go after B. Go, we'll go for B. Uh, cause the guy that Alistair just killed the guy that actually hit me, right? Uh, yes, that's All correct. Right. Yeah, that was the one. Stabbed I... him in the heart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then so I got twenty four. Six. Uh, let's go. We're gonna use our last. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, smoke him if you got him. We'll go for a trip. <laughs> Another six damage. Okay. So that's uh, twelve total. And did he pass his uh, thing? If he's still alive. Uh, he is still alive, and it was a strength check for this one. Yeah, about fourteen. He got a... Ooh. Impressive. So he does pass, yeah. Um, is that your full turn? Uh, yeah. Okay. Passing it over to Volknar. Um, okay. I'm gonna move up. Try to get behind this dude. With the Great Axe. Try to get behind F, and then I will do an attack. Okay. Is that flanking? Yeah, would that be an advantage roll? It would be. Yes. Whoa! Oh, shit. You have a racial feature for that. You you get an extra damage dice because you're racial. Oh, really? Yep. Look at your features and traits tab. Yeah. You have Omega crits. Did it not? Oh, it didn't automatically do it? Interesting. It did it for the, the crit, but not for the racial thing. Huh. And it's a whole extra D12. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Where, I don't even see that. It's at racial the very trait. bottom of your features and traits. Yeah, I just go go for it. Roll it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just roll the d12? Yeah, just add yes. a d12 to that. Yes, custom d12. Six here. Okay, 16 damage. Uh, and that was on who specifically? Um, uh, I'd also had the plus two for the rage, right? Yes. So, oh. 18 damage. Oh, that was to F. Gotcha. Uh, he is still standing at this moment in time. If you would like, you can t- uh, uh, take your frenzy attack. Um, yeah, sure. I'll take the frenzy attack. I'll, t- I'll do it on the same guy, too. Twenty-three. That is a hit. Seven. Uh, go ahead and describe your kill. Um, Volkner is like really feeling. Cutting people's heads off, so he's just gonna uh, he's gonna cut this guy's head off too. In the background of this, the yeah yeah yeah, his heads will roll are just like blaring right now. <laughs> um, this guy is gone as well, and that brings us to Zeusani. What would you like to do? Uh, I guess I'll start with. I think it's probably. Uh, I'm going to fire a crossbow bolt at the orc lady. Uh, 22 to hit. That is a hit. Uh, 10 damage. Okay. Damn. And then Tentacool is also going to attack her. With a 21 to hit. That is also a hit. Jeez. Uh, another six damage. Okay. I'm going to move further up close to these guys. Gotcha. 
And you can hear Floon sobbing, please, please don't kill me. Don't worry, Floon, we're here. We got your oh, back. Sorry, not, not Floon, that's Volo, that's my bad. Or Volo. Volo, just take cover. We'll take care of these people. All right, that brings us to the knight. She will uh, make her two attacks. That's going to be a miss, and this is going to be a miss as well. Um, that's her turn, and you can see that she puts her sword up in like a defensive stance once more. Uh, Harold, what would you like to do? Uh, Harry is going to... Try to get some more... Try to support these people. Alright, so it looks like these two... Harry's going to go with... Um... We'll go with uh, Earth Tremor. Yeah, we'll go with Earth Tremor. Harry's gonna run up behind uh, behind Victor and Alistair and like punch the ground and cause like uh, an earthquake. Okay. And do I need to roll? Is it like yeah, a... deck saves? All right. Probably for those two people. That first one's a fail. Second one's a success. All right. So on a failed save, a creature takes one d6 bludgeoning and is knocked prone. Okay. Uh... And so B is the one who failed. So I'm gonna put him prone. Yeah. Purple. So he'll just take more damage and go prone. Okay. And I guess that's it. Uh, then Harry would uh, retreat back to <laughs> take some cover. Gotcha. And I'll say you weren't close enough to get hit by that much. I think you're fine. Um. That is going to bring us back up to the top of the order to Aerith. What would you like to do? Um, we're going to roll for that spell again. Okay. <laughs> laser bird. Activate laser. Oh, that is a hit. Ta -ta! <laughs> Let me roll that damage. Yeah. Ooh. 19. Holy 19 shit. once again. Shit. A lot Spicy. of damage. Uh, you deal 19 damage with the Guiding Bolt, and it zaps into the bandit captain, who goes down on one knee, drops the sword, the scimitar in one hand, and the dagger in her other, and she goes, We surrender. We surrender. And you can see the other guys... Uh, over by Victor, Alistair, and Volknar, hearing her say that, put down their own weapons. The bodies of their comrades, either bleeding out or dead on the ground. And, and they drop their weapons as well. Do you guys let them surrender? Hey, why not? Finish them off. <laughs> you just, you're hungry for the kill? No, I'm really not. Alistair goes and leans on the wall and sees what the group does. He doesn't want to interfere. <laughs> and you can see the knight kicking away like the sword and the dagger from this orcish woman and kicking her onto the ground. Uh, I think uh, Victor and Volknar should at least knock C and B unconscious. Like, just give them with like, uh, can we just like yeah, we'll knock them out? And we'll just punch them and like carry out. them over to like like we're not you don't want to murder them that'd be pretty mean but yeah we could tie them up but I mean more cinematic if we just knock them out 
do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'll punch one in the face and try to knock it out. <laughs> yeah. go, go ahead and just give me strength checks for the both of you. <laughs> they kind of just shrug and then... Okay. <laughs> kind of, you know, don't fully connect. Uh, Volknar, you have no issues knocking out uh, <laughs> the less injured of the two. Victor, your punch, like just kind of clips them on the ear and, and does not do enough. Um, and they're like, oh, I surrendered. What the fuck, man? <laughs> We're not going to kill you. We, you know, and then Victor uh, would, you know, in um, in wrestling, when one bad guy grabs a guy by the back, like, and holds him for the other guy to hit him. Yeah. Yeah, I would do that for Volknar so he could, like. Gotcha. Uh, so you want me to punch him again? Yeah, yeah, I'm holding him. I got his arms behind his back so you can punch him in the face. All right. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be like an <laughs> advantage or something. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he's... He's, 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 he's turning this guy into like a pulp at this point. He's like actually taking a point of damage for each punch. So I'm going to say he's... You're just like punching him in the face over and over. And <laughs> as you do this, uh, you can hear the knight being like, what What are you doing? Stop that right now. There's no need for this barbaric behavior. All right. They're the bandits. We are not. Yeah. Okay, Victor would throw the guy on the ground then. Yeah, he's, like, he's like, fine. He like spits it. <laughs> um, and as this is happening, you can hear Volo be like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Savra Bella Bantra. I... I cannot tell you how much, I, how grateful I am, and and prestige worldwide. And his arms like go wide out, and you see that uh, typical Volo is back, uh, boisterous and gregarious in his nature, uh, ready to sing your praises, and unable to pay for the for your saving of him once more. Um, he looks down on his luck, kind of beaten up, roughed up, like he's been tossed around in this alley by these zents. Um, the woman approaches you and says, thank you. I probably wouldn't have been able to get out of here alive without your help. Um, my name is Savra Bellabranta. And she looks over at Volo and she goes, I see that you already know our uh, individual here in trouble. Um, we, we go way back. Is there some place we can, we can bring these fools to? Uh, our, uh, our tavern is right around the corner. We'll tie them up there and get some uh, get some answers out of them. Excellent. We'll do. Let's uh, let's bring them around the the back, and uh, let's take a quick break here, and we'll pick back up in the tavern with Savra and a few Zents. So you guys drag uh, these three Zents back with Savra. To Ooh, we blindfold tavern. them first. Let's do that so they don't know where they are. <laughs> Even though they they were right around the corner. Yeah, we blindfold yeah. them and we like circle the neighborhood a few times so they don't know how close they are or where they are. I don't think it matters. <laughs> like a parade. Uh, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's not make it. Let's not make a scene more than when we already have. You know, but, yeah. <laughs> I already cut two guys' heads off. <laughs> yeah, we're going to call you the executioner from now on. Uh. So you're back at the tavern. You have these guys. What, what would you like to do with them? You, The two uh, Zent bandits are outside. The really battered and beat up bandit captain you can bring inside, or you can have her outside as well. It's up to you guys to do what you wish. Hmm. Um, I don't think we should leave them outside. Yeah. Yeah, I th actually, we, we take him in, tie him up in the basement. Yeah, uh, like we'll just tie him to a chair right now, I guess. Yeah, we don't want him in the basement. Uh, we're working on things down there. At, uh, we don't want him seeing too much. The classic, you know, pull people in and then yeah. flip the sign to close. Yeah, he... and then uh, lock the doors. <laughs> grabs him. Gotcha. Victor grabs him both by the collar. And... If there's any patrons, we uh, we, we quickly <laughs> usher them out, and then yeah. if there's any inconvenience, we toss him a coin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> done and done and and there's one or two patrons but they see what's happening and they're like oh okay and they like down their beers <laughs> one of them's like eating a sausage he's like uh i'm out of here and he grabs official like, business grabs official it. business is all boys gotta <laughs> close up early tonight the tavern is empty it is yours to do with as you wish um savra bella 
Bella Branta is here as well and says, Don't hurt them, don't hurt them. We'll hand them <laughs> to the city watch when all's said and done. Mm. Do you know these lot? Do you have troubles with them? The we've, uh, we've come across the uh, their type before. Members of their, of their group. Are they, are they Zents? Is that what they were? Yeah. Is that the... Goldfish or the snake people? Snake people. Okay. And who is uh the guy that came earlier that Alistair was working with? Which group was he with? Uh he was of the Zenterum as well. Uh oh. So who wants to talk to this lady? <laughs> <laughs> so Miss uh Miss Dent lady, why uh why were you picking on our friend here? And she goes, what, what what did he have that you wanted? And at this Volo actually speaks up and Volo says All I was doing was talking to some strangers in the street about Never Ember's Enigma. This this thing that will supposedly lead them to the the five hundred thousand gold dragons. I, look, I they began to accost me. They said, how do you know about that? Something, I, I was just two, two blocks away. The, I don't know. There were two big groups, this one and another one led by another strong looking guy. And you can see the orcish lady getting angry. She's like, shut the fuck up, Olo. No, we'll keep talking, Volo. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess we'd, we'd play dumb and be like, never remember as Enigma. What is that? And, and Volo, as Harold, as you say, keep talking, Volo, he, he, like, seriously brightens up like nobody's ever said this to him before. Like, it's the only thing he's ever wanted to hear. And um, he's like, oh, yes, there were two very, two very large groups. There were these jerks, and, and then, uh, I don't know, there were these other ones. And they went into, like, a side back door of some manor down the street. And, and it looked like these ones were going around the corner the other way. The whole thing was rather strange, frankly, and I was talking about Never Ember's Enigma, and they were telling me to shut up and go away, and I was like, I'm allowed to stand on this street corner. He's, like, launching into this, like, whole story. Uh, all right, so uh, just tell us the people about it. Yeah, what, do you, what do you know about this this thing called the Never Ember Enigma? And she's... Do you have her at the same table? Like, where where do you have her? Yeah, I guess they'd all be tied up together, right? Oh yeah, we'd have them surrounded. Okay. Um, and she's like, I'm not saying nothing about this. If you guys you... would like to make a persuasion or intimidation checks or something, like... Um, Harry would cast I... Detect I... Thoughts. Oh, good call. I okay. also have a um, plus three intimidation, so I will try to intimidate. Okay. Uh, Volcar, Everyone berates the lady. <laughs> I mean, do you do you really want to let uh, us let our burly boys here take over the questioning, <laughs> Miss Horn? Uh, she will. So she needs to. Roll. Do you do I need to roll something, or do you just use detect thoughts? Uh, fourteen wisdom save. Fourteen wisdom save. Uh, I got. Oh wow, I got an eleven. So you can dig in a little bit. She knows yeah. you're using the spell. Um, yeah. Volknar, your intimidation is pretty good. Uh, are you using it on her as well? Um, yeah, or like, I don't know, just all these three people that we captured. Sure. I guess. Um, <laughs> just stand there menacingly. Yeah. yeah you just... did chop off two of their homies' heads in front of them. <laughs> right. Your, blood, so your, say... your axe is still covered in blood. <laughs> so, so as Harold uses detect thoughts on, on this orc woman, uh, Volknar, you come up l leeringly over her sort of like looking down at her threateningly arms crossed big imposing figure maybe even playing with your axe blade a little bit um harold 
So detect thoughts, you actually get quite a bit with this, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, like first surface level thoughts, and then if I ask a leading question, basically, I think, I think they answer it. Okay, so the very first surface level thought that you get from her is, can't tell them about the raid. Um, as you dig deeper, uh, shift your attention to another creature's thoughts or attempt to probe deeper. If you probe deeper, they must make a saving throw. <clears throat> as you probe deeper, you get the thought of, fuck, we're going to let Erstal Floxen's group down. We didn't raid the front of the fucking manor. Fuck. We got to get in there. I, I mean, everyone's, they're all dead. Oh, Jesus Christ, this is going to be such a nightmare. Manchun is going to have my head. Those are her thoughts. She is tight-lipped. She's sitting there. You can tell that she's uncomfortable with Volknar leaning over her. And you suspect that her, like, from her thoughts, her mind is racing. You probably got a lot of information from her more than you normally would. And you suspect it's because she's kind of terrified right now. Um, Harry would ask about the uh, key. The, um, what's it called? It has a name. Uh, the Stone of Galore? The Stone of Galore, yeah. Um, at this, the, the two Zent bandits look at you rather blankly, but you can see recognition cross Istrid's face, and she goes... How do you know about that? Uh, because you Detective just... Harry, he knows everything. Um... We're talking to the new uh, big private eye over here. He knows a lot. Well, that's the obvious answer, but... Tell me what you know about it. Um, And she goes... I'm not telling you nothing. Take me to the fucking city gods now. And you can see Savra looking at you all like, wait, something more is going on here? And she goes, I am going to call the city gods, if that's okay. Can I trust you not to hurt these lot? Well, let's, let's hold on. Let's hold on one moment before we call them. We might, uh, we might be able Al to get a little more information <clears throat> out of her. Alice just slides over and, uh, you know, turns, turns the chair around like the, uh, cool guy away and sits down he's like oh, let's not call the guard so quickly and sits down <laughs> and then uh well, he's like maybe maybe we hear what they have to say for a minute and then uh looks to the the boys and then istrid he's like we, uh, we and then he's gonna he's gonna say we may all uh be connected in the same plot and uh looks at them all roll a persuasion check for istrid or for uh savra specifically Persuasion. Oh. She's not overly convinced. She's like, look, we've saved Volo's life. We took care of some of them. I am going to go call the City Watch at this point. And she does begin to make for the door. She's not wary of you guys, but she does understand that there's far more going on here, and she doesn't think it's appropriate for you to be investigating or interrogating these these oh, folks authority in this yeah now is it's yeah we have a big decision your boys do we let her uh call or do we uh you know i don't think we should we... take a fight with her that no might, i think that might backfire on us down the line. <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> all right she will take her leave for now and she begins to walk down the street looking for like a city guard post um, you guys probably have like, you know, a few minutes still. Alistair, Alistair, uh, goes up to him. He's like, you guys got to go. And then looks to the rest of the group. He's like, let them go help, uh, Floxel. We, we don't know, but only Harry knows about that stuff, right? Oh, Correct. that's right. Okay. We're rewind sitting down <laughs> coolly. Well, Harry would, no, Harry would share all that information. Oh, you guys, I got it. Yeah, but you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna tell all that information in front of them when you just read their minds. So she knows that you were reading her mind. Yeah. 
And I was gonna ask, did um, did I did I get surface level thoughts of what she thought about when I asked about the 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 key thing? Uh, no, the spell had had okay. probably had given up by then. Let me just double check. Uh, one minute. Um, actually, I will say that you did get surface level thoughts. Um, the surface level thoughts were not too different from what you already gained. They were supposedly the Grail Huns have it. Stuff we already know. All right. So if uh, so does that mean Alistair's request to let them go did happen? Uh -oh. No. If Harry shared the information with us. If he told us that, that's what I would have done. Yeah. Well, uh, if we're if we're gonna let them go, we're gonna have to. <laughs> yeah. Make it look like they escaped, not like they let it, not like we let them go. Yeah. Um. We should well, say right, right, you're you're in this deep with us now. I hope we can count why, on this question. Why do we want them to be free? So they can try to recover the thing. Because I'm in with this group. <laughs> yeah, the the guy they were talking about was the one who was here earlier that we like protected from the guards. Um, and at the like you're saying all of this aloud in front of them, and Istra goes. <sighs> I mean, not in this state. If I let go, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Hell, I might have to get out of Waterdeep, actually. Mm, well, then, and, and then I Alistair, Alistair walks up when she says this and like, it's like, what's it worth? What the, uh, how much is it worth to you? <laughs> kind of gives her a grin. My freedom? To get the fuck out of here? Everything. He, he nods and he's like, he's like, what do you have on you? <laughs> uh, she has... See, uh, she has fourteen gold pieces, seven silver. Um, her, she doesn't have her scimitar and dagger anymore. She she would give you her chainmail. Chainmail. Um. Well, I mean, Alistair can't wear that, but he would just he would just say, yeah, "Hold your stuff." And just say, "Give us a sec. We gotta decide." And then uh, looks to the group. He's like, they don't seem like they want to go through with the plan, so what's what's the use of letting them go anyway? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too, buddy. Hmm. But we... Maybe we get, we get the location of where your friend was, so we can go back him up ourselves? We already know how, where that is. I've been how, there. How, yeah. how far do we want to involve ourselves in this, Alistair? What do you think? I think I think, I think think what we do is uh, he kind of... He's like, you know what? Hold on a second. And just kind of... he's He, he kind of... Uh, motions to the the two strong boys and tells them to push them in this room. Yeah, our our guests put them in this room. And then closes this door behind him. Then uh, when he, when they were joining the group, he's like, "Ah, oh, that's better." <laughs> what do we? Uh, uh, what about Volo? He's here in all this. It's fine. Volo's cool. Right, Volo. You'll oh, keep your mouth uh, shut, right? You know what they say, loose lips sink ships, and I do not have loose lips. No, sir, absolutely not. I will be very quiet about all of this. Yeah. Right. Well, then Alistair based, just goes... Based well, on how you got yourself into this trouble. Alistair well, uh, just say, well, basically, out. what happens is we get in good with the guards if we, you know, we surrender these people to them, and we look like we're merciful. We didn't even kill them all, you know? That's good on us. And he gives them all a thumbs up, and he's like, and then we'll go and do the dirty work after this. We'll finish what they couldn't. All right. Well, I'll back your play, Alistair. Yeah, win-win, right? Yeah, sounds sounds like the smart play. I mean, I'm gonna. Everyone's happy. I'm gonna get back into this room because there's a fucking doorway that leads out. So I'm gonna. Well, they're they're tied up, but yeah. I assumed you would have like you know secured them to something. Yeah, you guys have their face to his fist. They're under your power. They're they are captured. Volkar says to Victor, "Do you want to punch one more more time? Try to knock them out again." Mm, <laughs> ah, like that door would be open. It'd be like locked. You know? I don't want to accidentally kill him. True. Yeah. That that is a worry for Victor. Yeah. He said, "Yeah, it's frowned upon." Just give him the gods. 
Worthmore alive at this point and not, you know, just let go so they can run away. Yeah, I agree. Do we? I'm thinking when the guards show up, though, Alistair, maybe you make yourself scarce. What do you mean? I got my papers right here. Alistair uh, uses his spell and whips up some fake papers. <laughs> Minor illusion never, spell. Never mind, then. That's clever as fuck. As long as they don't ask to, like, hold them. Okay. What do you so mean? This... He turns it around in his hand and flicks it. <laughs> it, it. It didn't make sound, but it looks real. <laughs> At this, Savra Bella Branta walks back in, three guards in tow, um, one for each of the prisoners, and she goes, Look, these lot helped me fight off uh, several Zents. Um, Volo here was a, a potential victim that I was trying to save. Uh, they assisted in the saving, and Volo goes, Here, here, Prestige Worldwide is a wonderful group. Uh, and you can see him look over at Alistair and wink as he says this. Um, <laughs> uh, and she... Savra Bella Branta's like, where are they? Uh, Alistair just... just points at the door. Like, they're over there. And the guards walk in, and they say, ah, excellent, yes. Um, these five of them, all five of them? And Savra's like, no, 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 not not those two. And she points at Victor and Volthar. <laughs> they're like, those three. And the guards, oh, okay. And they begin to put manacles on uh, all of the Zentrum bandits and everything. Um, and begin like leading them all away. If um, Voldemort's a little upset that nobody recognized him because he thought he was getting like in goody goody with the guards, <laughs> and then they tried to arrest you. Well, this, it might be the night shift, so you, as you this, actually don't recognize these guards. As this is happening, Alistair would like go up and like put his arm around one of the the, the back of one of the guards, and say thanks for coming by, boys, and try to pickpocket the guard. Who, who's uh, one of the one of the guards I know names? Uh, you would know Jeffter. Jeffter. I want to I want to ask him if Jeffter's on tonight. I want to make sure uh, one of the guards, guards looks back and they're like, "Oh, oh no, he's over in section E. We're from section uh we're from section G." Are those real sections? Would I know that? Uh you might not know the section names, but you would know that that is actually how they work. And so they are probably for, like uh Savra probably went a different way than like where the guards you hang out with generally patrol. Okay. To find these guards in particular. Um, Alistair, go ahead and roll that sleight of hand. Already done. Holy shit. Okay. Um, you find several different things. Pieces of paper. <laughs> uh, there are a few gold, uh, or sorry, a few silver pieces in this guard's back pocket. Um, anything in particular you're looking for? Uh, I mean,. I suppose like keys or like um something something of that sort. They actually have the keys on the front belt loop of their person, specifically because like they have the manacles and everything in that same sort of area. So keys to do these um are these specific for each pair or do they like universal keys? Uh you don't know at a glance. Okay. Well I'd, either way I'd take them. The you try to take the keys? Yeah. Okay, so let me just actually make a check for that. Uh, okay, you're actually able to slide the keys off the belt as you as they walk by. <laughs> All right. Nice. Perfect. Um, so they begin frog marching them all out. Uh, the only person who's left is Savra and Volo. Or the only people left are Savra and Volo at this point. Um, they begin marching them down the street towards probably the same jail that they have the dead bodies in, you would guess. Um, at least that's the direction that they're heading in, so far as you can tell, Harold. Um, Sava turns to you all and says, thank you so much for your help. Um, if you ever wish to, um, come by the temple, please be, you know, be friendly. Um, you're more than welcome over at the um, Temple of Tyr. Uh, the Order of the Gauntlet is always open. Um, and the Halls of Justice will ring true throughout Waterdeep. And she bows deeply before you all 
And you can see that she has this symbol of tear on her chest. Uh, and I will pull that up actually really quickly for you. <clears throat> and it's hammer and scales, basically. Um, I'll just drop that in the chat. So it's this hammer and scales. Um, and she looks at Volo and says, Good day to you, sir. I am sorry for the trouble. To the lot of you, come by the Halls of Justice if you so wish. I might have work for you in the future. Ooh. Can, can, uh, can Volknar ask more about what the hell the Hall of Justice is? Yes, of course. And you can see that she like lights lightens up at this. The Halls of Justice are the Temple of Tyr. Uh, they're located west of the market in the Castle Ward. They represent all that is good and lawful in the city of Waterdeep. And you can see from her regalia, as well as her armor and everything, that she is the stereotypical, like the archetypical knight in shining armor. Um, she is a a paragon of justice and good in the world, or at least attempting to appear as such. And the, the halls of justice that she describes them are a place where, so when the troubles broke out in Neverwinter some 100 years ago during the plague, the halls of justice in particular were the location where uh, groups of adventurers were able to come back to uh, as like a home base while simultaneously providing for the sick of the plague and and all these other issues that were going on in the city at the time and so from there they've sort of spread along the sword coast but the halls of justice are a place where you can come and try to fight for good how did how did she uh meet up with volo why why was she protecting him oh she heard uh these awful pitiful cries down an alley and Volo pipes up and he's like, they were not pitiful. <laughs> How tall is this lady? Is she like massive or is she like a normal sized woman? Uh, she's like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, um, she's rather uh, pretty in general. She doesn't appear overly uh, buff, you would say, but she has full plate armor on. Hmm. Either way, Alistair would um, be like, uh, Fort Valley, lady, lady. And the same to the lot of you. Now, I am going to take my leave. It has been quite a day. I will return to the halls. Um, if you, any of you wish to stop by, you may do so in the future. Day to the lot of you. Volo. As she, as she walks away, Alistair's like, until we meet again. And then uh, does my illusion and makes a rose. Thank you. Till we meet again. She takes it, or she, no, she can't really take it. Well, as she, as it, as it lands in her hand, he he gives it a, he grins, and then it bursts into flames. Nice yeah. trick. And she takes her leave and walks out. What would you guys like to do? Well, it sounds like we gotta go help Alistair's buddy. Yep. Oh, we gotta have a band meeting. Anybody need a need a break? I feel a bit tired. Perhaps short rest. <laughs> so I will say, like, during this, you guys have had a short rest. So if you need okay. to, like, roll nice. anything, this counts as a short rest. Cool. I'm, I'm cool as a cucumber, but I know you guys took some hits. Um, um, I think I'll, I'll just re rejuvenate been, my sloth, obviously. It's been so long since uh, Did Harry find, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ian. I got Who? Uh, Floon. <laughs> oh, uh, you did not find Floon. You rolled a 12, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you, you did not find Floon. Do I... I... On Floon. Do, do, how many, um... Short rest die rolls do I roll? As many, as, many as, you want. as you want. You said you lost like fifteen health, right? The the thing it, the thing is like normally they're like um limit limited to like a certain number, but we've rested so much you you have as many as you need at this point probably. Okay. So oh, wait. Oh, I wait, how do I, I, Yeah, how do I roll that? 
a quick short rest um, down at the bottom. I'll we'll say like cleric hit die with like however many boxes. You just click one of those boxes. Yeah. And then the roll will pop up. And you just click that. I didn't roll and I hit the short rest. You see? You see? So nice look. Stuff. You see where the button is? You see how there's uh, boxes ab above them? You highlight the box for how many dice you want to roll. And then a thing will pop up underneath. And then you click that. Um, so I don't know how to reset my short rest. Do I have to do a long rest? I'm at, I'm at 14 HP. So I got it for you. I can, I'm can. i going to do it. Okay. Let's see. So it says you've completed a short rest. Oh, it doesn't. It ben gives you didn't to... have the maximum HP thing set. Sorry, give it a moment. Yeah, the thing is, it has like two different types of short rest. There's like the one where you roll, and then one where it just like gives you max rolls or some shit. Uh, automatically apply a reset or just reset your maximum HP. I have the one automatically apply healing with dice result. Yeah, yeah. That's the one that gave me the dice. Yeah. Maybe they're different. This is really weird. It's like not applying it as I try to do it for him. So Aerith did it. Yeah. That was a custom roll. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, um, it's not giving me the option. Yeah, that's really weird. I wonder if there's like a bug or something right now. Yeah. I put it, <clears throat> what I'm supposed to roll I can, uh... 12 and then add 3. Yeah, it tells it tells you in the description what your your hit dice are. Okay. So I mean, everyone gets uh one extra heal per long rest from my healing kits. Uh... And and those those um the plus three that stacks it applies to each dice you use. So if you were to use like multiple, you get plus three for each. Oh, so it would be plus nine on everything. If you did three dice total, yeah. Uh... Oh, wow. You can you don't have to do all at once. You could do like two, yeah. and then if you need yeah. it more, you could do another one. But oh, yeah. okay. the all way right. things are trending, it doesn't matter. You just do whatever you need. I'll just do two. That's very yeah. unlikely as to take more than one short rested assist. So five plus five plus six plus six on each dice. No, no, just uh, six. Oh, okay. It's three each dice. Uh, so I'm at 25. All right, I'm going to roll my third one. Those are all 12s? That's rough. 8 plus 3, 11. Okay, cool. I'm back at max HP. Nice. Yeah, those are just those are just low rolls, those first two. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, 2 and a 3 is bullshit. Yeah, that's rough. Is everybody good? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. So you would like to go to Grailhund Manor, is that correct? That's the place where uh, Alistair's buddy is. That's the idea. Yeah. Let's go check it out. Let's go see what's yeah. happening. All right. Um, at this point, night is beginning to fall. Um. And I will say this. You guys are where would you like to be so i gotta take alistair off this obviously but um where would you like to be in grailhun manor or where would you like to go in grailhun manor alistair you know that there's at least two entrances one to the north and one to the south the south is there are two entrances on the south one is a side door into like a back kitchen or something and then there is the entrance for like a like the horses and the wagons in the barn and then on the north there is like the official entrance and that was the one that harry knocked on at one point alistair would lead them to the back door or actually you know what i'm gonna take them to the can side I... over here where i hop the fence oh. can i go knock on the front door like you... normal and then like yeah, you... you guys go like and you guys sneak in at that time so yeah or i'll no. say this Go ahead That's and what toss you, want to you do, guys sure. wherever you want. I would have followed Alistair's lead. Yeah, Alistair would take lead on this one. Before we left, I would, have, I would have swapped my familiar out for something that flies in case we need it. Gotcha. So we're following Alistair. 
Yeah, so and Andy will oh. be here. Oh no, I dropped my guy in the fog. I can't see him. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be over and he's gone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm with, I'm with Alistair. Okay, so then we've got Volknar and Aerith with Alistair as well. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You want a diversion kind of thing, or do you want to just all sneak in together? Alistair smiles and leans against the wall, and then uh, thumbs over the shoulders like, "This is where I snuck in, boys." <laughs> Like it looks proud. <laughs> we, I think we're close enough that I can. Like he can message. finally share what he's been doing. You know, he's. <laughs> I think we're close enough that I can message with Harry too, if we wanna. If he wants to, like, let us know how things are going. Or wait, can he? I don't think he can respond. Well, go go ahead and tell us your plan, Harry, and then we'll just. I you don't know, have a plan. And then we'll just fast forward to us like approaching the plan. So tell us the plan. I don't have a plan. What do you mean? You you wanted to break off to do the front door thing? What was? No, I was you... just asking. Like I would just go up and knock on the door and be like, I don't know. Do you have a moment to speak about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? <laughs> oh, yeah. Or or I would just be Harry the detective. <laughs> did, like, you, hey, did you uh, did you did you want did you did you want this for? Did you want to create an opportunity for us to sneak in, or did you want to do this and then come join us and then sneak in? Which no, was it? it was it was only to be like a diversion for you guys to sneak in, like if everyone right. was at the front door or something. Fair enough. You guys could like. And you, know, you know about the spot too, so you know how to get over the fence if you wanted. Yeah, and that's what I we did this before, so I, that's why I was saying I think it would be funny okay. to do it again. Boom, done. Plan on the table. So you've been here, Alistair. Yeah. How right many? Did you see how many, like, guards and stuff they got in there? They don't have guards. Smiles. Well, shit. All right. Well, at least they didn't have guards. And, uh, right in. I'll refresh our memory. Uh, what are we... Are we killing people? We're killing people, right? So, remember that... That key? That, you know, the gems for the, the thing? Uh-huh. One of them's here. Oh. You gotta go get it. All right. Should we do, uh... Should I have the owl do, like, a quick flyover? Scope out the the yard. I suppose that couldn't hurt. So I would do that. Okay. Uh, Harry rings owl. the front door. <laughs> you ring the bell at the front door. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, let's go with the owl first. Uh, Zeus, you see through the owl's eyes, right? It's either yes. see or hear, but not both at the same time. Uh, I think I can do both. Okay. Let's see. While my familiar, traditionally as an action, I can see through its eyes and hear what it hears. Okay. Uh, oh, damn. So you see the following in the courtyard. Let me just read you this description. Uh, the estate is well tended. Um, the In winter, the br branches are stripped bare of the trees. In the yard... Snow covers a great deal of the area. You can see what appears to be a large balcony on one side, enclosed by an iron railing. Lights appear to be on inside, but you can't fully make out what's happening because it appears like they've been curtained off. Um, skulking through the yard are two large mastiffs, as well as an individual who is not sort he's he's sort of like moving stiffly through the yard he's not limping he's not hobbling but he's moving oddly and stiffly through the yard um as the owl flies overhead and i will show some of this i am totally going to talk to those dogs and turn them to our side i will drown them that's what VGK does. <laughs> oh, damn. I thought I thought about the mage hand uh, ration diversion. Yeah, who brought hot Ooh, dogs? That could be good too. Yeah. But I can I can talk, I speak dog. So let's let's see if I can convince. Them to, <laughs> I, I speak dog. I speak oh dog. man. I speak animal. Well, well versed in the mastiff dialect. Dog is one of my languages. All they're gonna say is food. Murder? Exactly. Like, if you join our side, you will have unlimited food. Oh. More food than you will ever be able to eat. Mastiffs don't look like yeah, that. Those things are nasty looking. Yeah. Those that's... are those are like undead mastiffs. So and and as the owl through the owl's eyes, you can see that there is smoke trailing behind them. 
Oh. Okay. <laughs> Those are like right. fucking hellhounds or some right. shit. Maybe maybe we won't try to pet them. Yo. All right, back to Volknar. Go ahead. Go out ahead with the puppy drowning. Cleric, this is this is you if these are undead. All you. Uh, oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, oh, jeez. Can you guys identify these things? So, bas so basically, Birdman uses his bird familiar to get information to the group. <laughs> Yeah, I would have like been narrating everything that the, the owls that I saw through the owl's eyes, so that the party could see too. Well, I guess we're gonna have to deal with those then. Yeah. Harry right. waves to the bird. <laughs> Harry waved okay. to the bird, guys. He waved to us. Well, cool. he's uh he's at the door. Should I tell him to? Should I tell him that we're ready? Should we, should we, shall we create uh, some sort action? of surprise attack? Or do you just want to run in head first? What do, what do you think, boys? Well, um... Harry, nobody we should be careful door. about this. What do you say, be careful? Yes. This is your boy, though, Alistair. We gotta... Run Can in there and save him. Uh, and Harry would try to open the gate, if see if it was locked. The door the, opens without the issue. The door opens. <laughs> uh, and as it opens, you hear... And you hear footsteps in your general direction. Oh, or you might be in trouble, boys. I think you gotta move. What we don't know you, that. What are you doing? Uh, We're still bickering about what we do. <laughs> I'm, I can't hear anything you guys are saying. So I'm I just guess for now, Harry uh, shuts the door. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the groundsman. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Nice. Um, <laughs> either way, Alistair would be like, so what's it going to be? Surprise attack or jump the fence? They seem like they're moving, right? Is the yeah, groundskeeper willing? I'm down mm -hmm. for the... Uh... The Leroy Jenkins approach. All right, on three. Yeah, me and Aerith could pop up, like, loose some spells real quick to keep him busy while you guys climb over the wall. Uh, Harry opens the gate. Yeah. Hey, okay. hey, strong, strong boys, give me, give me ten fingers. And Alistair wants him to. He's like, I'll go first. He he, he draws his sword. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what I'm gonna say is roll initiative, real quick, everyone. Uh, and oh. it's gonna start. Everyone, so Harry and the dogs and groundskeeper Willie are going to have a round before everyone else because Harry opened the gate before. Uh, I got a one again. <laughs> I got a four. So we're going to have to deal with Harold on the ground this whole round? <laughs> no. Harold's going to die. <laughs> True. Just, if he goes down before Harry the other two hit, those are automatic... Success? I assume uh, before we even showed up, Harold would have used his mage armor or something, right? Harry cast mage armor. Yeah. <laughs> like a, a panic cast when you hear like, the growling. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to add you guys to this. Uh... Does the uh, These are not the droids you're looking for. Hand motion, cast the mage armor. Because I can, if I can theoretically run the encounter, I can. Okay, so I can actually just auto roll initiative for everyone. Do you guys want me to do that? But I rolled a or... twenty-two. Oh, okay. I rolled an eight, so I'm okay with that. Actually, if I do that, you guys all the lowest one is going to be a sixteen. Why's that? I don't know. It just auto rolled very well by the looks of it. Um, Harold, what did you get? Uh, above just... or below a sixteen? I got a one. Just, okay, just so... go with. I don't care. Go with the the new new rules. So I'm gonna give you the sixteen. <laughs> um. So in order, it's gonna be Alistair, Aerith, Shadow Mastiff, Shadow Mastiff, uh, uh, Volknar, Zeusanu, Harold, Victor, Groundskeeper, Willie. 
So first to Shadow Mastiff one. Uh as you open the door, it growls and charges at you uh out onto the street. And as it does so it slips through the door as you're opening it. So like it's like a small little space and it takes an attack at you. Whoa. Can you see that? No. Uh... I might have to. Oh, I have to change that again. So I got an eleven. So it's gonna miss, I assume. Uh, uh, <laughs> my, do, I, do I get my mage armor? <laughs> yeah, I'll say you had mage armor up. That's fine. <laughs> Excellent. Pulls collar, sweats profusely. <laughs> uh, mage armor? Question mark. <laughs> uh, definitely need mage armor. Um. Yeah, anyway, I guess it, uh, yeah, it misses anyway. Okay. And the other one will also charge, but it can't actually get, well, it could get there, but it can't attack. So they can both, like, get to the door. Um, one of them attacks, one of them does not. And that will be their turn. So we'll bring it over to your turn now, and then it will be Willie's turn, and then everyone will, like, spend their turn getting up over the wall and stuff. Well, me and, uh, uh, me and Aerith just fly over it, right? Yeah, 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 definitely, actually. And I was in the middle yeah. of asking for ten fingers so they could just, like, the burly boys just throw me over. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Harry's uh, Harry's not going to attack or anything, but he's just going to um, kind of, like, dance around him like, uh, like a little Mexican whatever. <laughs> The, take the dodge Ro action. like a like a rodeo clown, just kind of like dodging around, going whoa, 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 gotcha, easy boys, and uh, kind of put his like hands out to maybe calm them. Okay. And, uh, just kind of yell out like, "Hey, hey, who's the... <laughs> I'm just I'm Harry, Harry the detective. <laughs> Whose shadow dogs are these? Yeah, who um... who owns these beasts? <laughs> gotcha. Uh, is is there anything in particular you want, you want to do while doing that, like mechanically, like the dodge action or something? Uh, not particularly, no. Okay. So I'll move on from you. Uh, Herv will be running over and be like, get out of here right now. And he can't get too much farther than that, I would guess. Like, I'm in the street. I can't pull over any further. <laughs> But he's running over to try to control them uh, at this moment in time. Uh, all right, so we'll go back to the top of the order. That brings us to Alistair. What would you like to do, Alistair? I want to get thrown over this fence. Okay. Um, so does that mean you want to like hold your action until like Volknar can toss you over? Or, I mean, if that's the fastest way to get over the fence. Do you uh, have a grappling hook or whatever now? Or a rope? I do. I just wanted to make an entrance, though. I thought it would be cooler <laughs> if I got thrown over. But you do, like, a cool flip in the air. I don't know. But, uh, but the truth, if the, if, if the group needs a way over, then, uh, then yeah, I'd pull out the handy-dandy grappling hook and give her a toss. Yeah, just roll a um, roll like an acrobatics or sleight of hand check or something for it. Yeah, uh, it, and because it's not, it's like a twelve foot wall, so it's like high enough that it's a pain in the ass. Um, you're able to toss it up, latch onto something, and get it up and over without issue. So that's probably going to be your action, and then some of your movement. I'll say that's half of your movement to get there so dash dash is an action right so yes but okay. for you you can use it as a bonus action really yeah because as a rogue oh sure. yeah i can dash well i'll be damned all right uh rogue stuff cool all right gonna use dash 
Let's see. So you said I used half before that? Uh, yeah, so you used 15 feet of movement for that. So you can go another 45. Okay. Well, Alistair drops his arms, lets them weightlessly wave behind him as he runs in the yard behind this tree. Takes cover. Okay. You do so without issue. Uh, Aerith, what would you like to do? Um... Uh, we're going in, right? Oh, yeah, like confirmed. Uh, I fly up and I, uh, uh, can I perch on this wall? Yes, definitely. And you can see a number of, like, well maintained, nice buildings that are a part of this courtyard. Um, this courtyard is snowy and barren, but you can see these strange shadows at the gates and an individual hobbling over towards them saying, trying to like call them back and Alistair having run over behind a tree. Okay. I guess I'll join them. Okay. So you fly over to hang out with Alistair. Um, is there anything else you would like to do? That was your movement. Um, no, that'll be it. Okay. Uh, that brings us to Shadows. Uh, they are going to attack once more. That's a hit, I assume, Harry? What was it? <laughs> Bro, Harry, you're so fucked. <laughs> uh, yeah. Strength drain, damn. Okay. Uh, so you take seven points of damage of necrotic damage, and your strength score is reduced by three. Vashna's gonna be uh, fucking up okay. a widow. So that's oh, the damn. One. <laughs> and the second reduced? one. Stats. Oof. Uh, does a sixteen hit? Uh, yes. But I guess on this one, I'm gonna use a reaction. Okay. Uh, shield, I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see. Oh, don't forget, you have the lucky trick. Yeah, shield. Uh, so I get plus uh, five to my AC. Okay. And so as this this Mastiff is about to strike you with these sort of necrotic, ghostly shadow fangs... Wait, you... hold on. Just real quickly. Sorry. Uh, yeah. When you are hit by an attacker. It says until the start of your next turn, you have a plus five to your AC bonus. So if I do that on the first one, do I get it this whole... Yes. Turn? Yes. All right. Then I then can I do that? Yeah, that's yeah, that's. Totally <laughs> although cool. I think it's as, although I think I it still hit. I don't know what, <laughs> yeah, what you rolled. Still hit you. I rolled a twenty-two. E fifteen. Yeah, so twenty. Yeah, so it still would hit anyway. So it doesn't matter. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Never mind. So it definitely blocks the second one, um, okay. and the the blast of light flashes up in front of you to prevent the fangs from sinking in and draining more of your strength. Um, and you can hear the groundskeeper be like, what the bloody hell is going on out there? Um, Get these things off of me! Volktar, it is your turn. The the rope in, uh, is dangling off the wall because Alistair left it attached to the grappling hook. Okay. What do you have to do? Um, climb the wall. Climb the wall. Oh yeah, or like, can I try to do some sort of funky stuff where like I jump off Victor's back and I go in over the wall? Yeah, if you want, you can do an acrobatics check. I mean, I... give me a heads up, you know. Or uh, or uh, acrobatics is plus two. I would, I have a plus six athletics check. Yeah, that's fine. Athletics is fine too. 
<laughs> Natural one. <laughs> so you oh, failed no. to give Victor a, a heads up, and as you d attempt to do this, you attempt to jump up on him, and he moves, and you literally just leap face first into the wall. <laughs> I'll, I'll, now I'll pick myself up and just use the rope. <laughs> okay. So you use the rope, and you go up over, and you're able to drop down without issue. Uh, do you want to be on top of the wall in the courtyard? What's your What's your plan? Uh, um. I, I want to be on top of the wall in the courtyard, but it's like I can only travel thirty feet, so I can only be right about this this rock. Okay, I think that probably makes sense. Um, and and you have cover behind that rock currently, if you wish. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking cover. Okay. Put, put, put them on the ground. Yep. Zeusanu, what would you like yeah. to do? It looks like are we are we being stealthy right now? Can I try to sneak in, or are we like killing these guys? I mean, you have not been, you've been stealthy so far in terms of like mastiffs and herb because they are focused on Harold. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, are we? We don't really know he's under attack. I mean, you can hear him shouting. He has been shouting. <laughs> I thought. Okay. Yeah. Oh wait. Okay. I thought it's you guys were gonna sneak in. Yeah, let's, that let's was do that. Point, that Harry's was the whole point of me going Pretty good there, distraction. Yeah. So I guess I'd. Uh... Well, I still want to save a friend if I see him, you know, struggling. I think you've got this. You can always misty step away. Let's see. So I've got. With dash, I can go 100 feet. Do I have dash? Well, uh, yeah. going over the wall was our action, so. Oh, okay. So I guess I'm going to, uh... I just had a special ability as a rogue. I can do it as a bonus action. I'm going to go, like, around, try to stay out of vision. And go, like, take cover at this corner to try to keep an eye on the... On Herv and the dogs. And then, my, how close am I to Harry? Then I'd shoot a message over to Harry, let him know that, like, you know, we're almost successfully in, keep him occupied a little bit longer, and we'll be able to sneak in unnoticed. What's your fly speed? Uh, 50 feet. 50 feet. Just... Oh, actually, so I can't use message, because that would have been a dash. Yeah, so it, that's what I was about to say, was you can either get, like, Somewhere or closer maybe, to like where Alistair is, or like maybe like down. What are, what's this over here? Can I like hide in this corner? Uh, yeah, totally. Those are two different little sheds. I was gonna say. So let me describe some of this to you. There's obviously these rocks here. These are like big raised garden beds right here. You could make it to one of those and sort of like hide behind one of them if you so wished. Um. Obviously, the tree the tree is within range. Tree where you I are now. To... So I guess I'll go, I'll hide behind this one, so I can be within, or is that still, is that 50? I think that's exactly 50. I think that's fine, yeah. And then, so Harry is still within range, so I'll go, I'll hide there, and then I'll message Harry. Okay. And you don't need to see the person for message, do you? I think it's as long as I know that they're there. Yeah, yeah point my finger Board towards a creature. a creature within range. Yeah, you're good. Totally good. And what do you say to him? Uh, just that like we're we're almost we're almost in. Keep him busy a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just hurry up. Okay. Uh, so that's Zeus News turn. Harry, what would you like to do? Uh, Harry uh, would try to get some space after being bit by one of these guys and just uh. Um, and Harry would cast uh, sleep. Ooh, sleep. Okay. Yeah, toward the two dogs that are in front of him. Um, which uh, creature affects creatures within a twenty foot radius? <laughs> Um, 
just checking one thing. Yeah. You're like non damage spells have been fucking key this campaign. Okay, yeah. Uh, roll I roll 5d8. <laughs> Uh, All right, so eighteen HP between the two. Okay. Does your so does your lucky them... feet work for that? Oh, attack roll. Uh, never mind. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of ones there, aren't there? A one, a two, a two, a five, and an eight. Um, so one of them is put to sleep. The other one is not. Alright. Um, Harry just yells out to uh, the guards keeper. Uh, get these dogs under control. <laughs> uh, I want to speak to someone. And he's like, get out of here. Get, get lost. You shouldn't be here. Uh, Victor, what would you like to do? Uh, are we rolling to get over the use the rope to go over the wall? If you just use the rope, it's just half your movement. Okay, so then I go over the wall, and then so fifteen feet left. Uh, I just want to see how far I can get. Okay, so then I'll just uh, get by this rock, and that's all my movement. Uh, yeah. You can always dash. Uh, wasn't going over the wall my action, or? No, no, no. That's only half your movement. The only reason oh. Ragnar used lost his action was because he tried to. Oh, <laughs> he tried to get style points. <laughs> All right. What are? Let's try to take damage from that. So okay. <laughs> so if I dash, how much movement does that give me? That'll give you another thirty. Feet. Another thirty. All right. Where can I get to? Twenty. Oh, you can come join me. Uh, oh, that's you're thirty five feet away from me. I'll move up to this rock. Okay. All right. So at this point, I'm going to ask everyone to give me a stealth check. Oh no! Oh no! Just a little stealth check. Oof. Armor boys have disadvantage, though, I think. You need one from Harry? <laughs> uh, no, not Harry. Um, I'm just going to make a roll. Actually, I think it would be... Oh, man, I rolled a natural two. He actually gets nothing attached to it. So you guys are all hidden at this moment in time. Um, nice. The groundskeeper's like, go on, get out of here. You don't belong here. And he's running over to the door because, like, the dogs are listening. Um, they're not going further than this location here. And as he's there, he's actually closing the door and, like, they, he, like, kicks the at the one that's asleep. And he's like, get up. And he doesn't make contact with it as he kicks it, but it, like, stirs the creature awake nonetheless. Um, and they come back inside, and he closes the doors. That's his turn. So the doors are now closed. We are back to the top of the order, which is with Alice, uh, Alistair. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Alistair creeps forward to this next tree. And um, let's see. Can you, uh, hmm. I'm going to summon my mage hand 
invisible. Uh, never mind, never mind, never mind. There's no use in doing it now. Scratch that. Doesn't summon Mage Hand. Uh, I'm just going to stay hidden behind the, the tree for now, I think. Okay. Where you are? Mm hmm. You want me to move on to Aerith? Uh, yep. Okay. Aerith, what would you like to do? Um. Uh, I think I'll I'll go over here. Okay. And would you like to take an action or? Um, no. Okay. Or, uh... wait, so what buildings are there? There's like a building here, like, uh, um... Basically everything in shadow is a building, but there are doors, uh, there is a door so far as you can tell right here. You believe that there's a door over here. <laughs> Uh, there's a door back outside this way, um, and you can probably see the door right here. What exactly are we even supposed to be doing here? We were just trying to break in. And to save Alistair's friend, right? Yeah. That's what I thought we were doing. We're trying to get the thing that they have, that they were, uh... That they took from the the, the guy from the explosion. We want that. Part of the key. Um. I guess I'll uh I'll actually dash this turn. Okay. When you when you fly, you have more movement, I think, than normal walking. Yeah, walking is only twenty five feet, but our fly speed is fifty. Oh. So if you dash, you can easily get behind that corner there if you wanted to, for example, flying. Around this corner? Yeah. Yep. I'll open yeah, I guess I'll do it flying. Oops. Stupid thing. Didn't see it. <laughs> Perfect. We've, we've been there before anyway. I saw that the inside of the building had rooms. Maybe like a table here and there. <laughs> uh, okay, so now you can see that um, there are two doors here. Uh, there is a door right here oops, to the north, and then there is a door right here at the end of the walkway to the west. Okay. And you can actually make it around the corner if you want, like on that pathway there. Yeah. Okay, that'll be in my turn. Okay. Uh, Shadow's turns. Let me check something. Okay. As they begin to walk away from here, they begin walking down the path when all of a sudden they stop, look, and begin sprinting this way. Just double check. Uh, towards Alistair in particular. And you can hear the groundskeeper being like, Oi, come back here, what's going on? And they just begin sprinting towards you, Alistair. Why? Um, Why would they do that? <laughs> they caught your scent on the wind. How oh. dare they? A shower more, bro. But it took them It took them an action to catch your scent, so they're not able to take a turn to like actually attack you or anything. Mm -hmm. That being said, we are back to Volknar. What would you like to do? Um, 
Okay, so so does everybody have? Do I have dash? Does everybody have dash? Yeah. Okay. Um, second question. I have a javelin. It says uh, range thirty slash one twenty. What is the one twenty? The one twenty is, is your um, it's your like weaker version of the attack, which means that you take a disadvantage attack on it. Um. But you is can that... make the throw at that distance. Anything okay. within is fine. Okay, so I'd roll a regular um, hit hit die, but then I would throw a disadvantage damage die. Other way around. Oh, okay. Disadvantage to hit, and then... Um, yeah, so the smaller number is the normal range, the large number is the long range, your attack roll has disadvantage with your target beyond normal range. Okay, and if I dash, is that my action? That would be your action, yes. But let me just double check this, because I think I see what you're trying to do. You want to like move up a bit and then throw a javelin at them? Yeah. So if you move up 30 feet, that would be your movement. And then I think you're a little outside still, by the looks of it. So you're close, but it's not... Let me just see one thing. Twenty feet. Yeah. Looks it's like close. I'd be, I'd be at forty feet for a javelin throw. Yeah. But does that does that mean I roll a disadvantage anyway? Yeah, that's it's technically that would technically be disadvantage. So it's anything over 30, 30 feet, I'd get disadvantage. Yep. Uh. Okay, so Volknar sees that, you know, the dogs are coming up on Alistair. He's got to move in. So he will move up about 30 feet. And he's going to pull out his javelin, and he's going to throw it at the at the top wolf, the one closest to Alistair. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's 40 feet. Um, okay, so... Disadvantage roll. Fifteen. That's a hit. Ooh. Nice. Okay. Ugh. Five damage. Um, that's okay. Yeah, uh, the javelin goes through like a wisp of smoke, and it actually seems to pin some of the smoke down into the snow, and you can see that it slows and stops the the shadow mastiff momentarily. Um. I'm just going to put the denotation on this just to s understand what it is. And then I'll put five damage. Um, okay. And so, uh, is there a bonus action you have, or is that your full turn? Um, Movement action. A frenzy attack? A single me oh, no, it's a melee. So no, and I, you have to be raging for that. So if you want to rage, you could do that. Um, How many times can you rage for a uh, long rest? Uh, three. Ooh, so nice. I already I have one done already. I mean, I'll, I don't need to rage right now because I can rage next turn with no penalties. So yeah, now I think that's end of the turn. Okay. Uh, Zeusnu, what would you like to do? Uh, hmm. Let's see. So I can only frenzy attack when I'm raging. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good to know. You gotta be really angry, frenzy. I'm really angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I want to give away my position quite yet. You can fly on top of a building. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll uh, I'll try to fly like up on top of this corner of the roof. So I was looking at like coming up from the side so they don't see me. <clears throat> and crossbow that fucker. Flap flap flap. Well, I figured just the roof to get a better vantage point, but I think I'm actually going to stay completely hidden and just attack through my owl. Oh, okay, cool. 
So I'm gonna gotcha. hang on the roof, stay hidden, just keep an eye on everything, and then Owlboy uh, is going to fly down to the one that Volknar hit, and I'm gonna cast Shocking Grasp through him. Ugh, was that 12 to hit? That is a hit. Oh, shit. So I just see this little oh, owl max damage. come out of nowhere and then just zap the, the, yep. the, just the like dog in front of me. Just like the zaps him, and then flies back to his tree. And which one was this that you were doing this to? The one that just took the javelin hit or not? Yeah, see. Where's B? So how much damage total is eight? Eight damage. Okay. Of lightning or whatever. Yeah, lightning damage. It is still up. Technically. Well, we can't take reactions, so take that, dog. <laughs> gotcha. So no reactions for that guy. Um, oh, uh, Harold, Ooh, and I, actually, I might want to use... Let me see how Hex works. Is that a bonus action? It is. And it's something that just stays up for an hour that I can use over and over. It's kind of like Hunter's Mark, right? Yeah. So you've already used an action as your spell. Is it a first level oh, spell? So I, oh, it's a cantrip. Hexes? Uh, Hex is a... Uh, well, it's a warlock, so I only have second level slots. But yeah, it's a first level spell. And Shock and Grass was a cantrip. Yeah, so I guess I couldn't do those together, could I? You can technically do it, but only, uh, can you do it in the reverse order? No, you can't do them both on the same turn. Then I will just stay hidden. Hide on the, hide on the roof. Okay. Um, Harold, what would you like to do? Uh, Harold is going to yell out to uh, the groundskeeper. Uh, no, no, this is, uh, get the, like, he's, Harry's really mad that he got bit and attacked, that he wants to speak to someone. Okay. He wants to speak to the manager. I want to speak to the manager. Really not happy that your, your mutt just bit me. It hurts. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Five. <laughs> um, and the groundskeeper's like, fuck off, I got problems in here. Hey, you're gonna have more problems when you hear from my lawyer. Um, he doesn't seem to be having it, and that's because you can begin to hear the sounds of combat coming from inside the courtyard. Uh, Harry tries to, like, regain his attention. I, uh, I, uh, I don't know. Slashing in with your fucking Kicking in the door. door. Fire the gate. Blast him with a spell. <laughs> sure, make a... Blow the door. Yeah, I'm gonna kick, the, kick the gate open and go, I'm not... I need, I'm need. i speaking to someone. I was gonna <laughs> open the door detective, with my mage hand if it, if it went detective further. Detective Harold. <laughs> make, a, make an attack okay, roll. Uh, make a strength check against the door. Oh, I have <laughs> negative strength. Didn't the guy? Didn't your strength drop by a bunch too when you got hit? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I have to do some. I don't know how I even know how to do that. This whole party is like some scrawny boys and then some really burly boys. <laughs> what would um? Six, seven, eight, nine. I'm a three, fairly dexterous boy. What a three in strength be negative three? Four. A three. Yeah. It would be uh one. Two, three. It would be negative four technically. It'd be negative four. All right, yeah. whatever this is, minus four. <laughs> so a four. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, your kick on the door just kind of rattles it. It doesn't open it. Um, you feel pretty <laughs> drained in general from this. Yeah. Uh, um, all right. <laughs> so the door is not opening. Uh, Victor, <laughs> what would you like to do? So the groundskeeper knows we're here, right? Something's going oh, yeah. on. Okay. Is up. So Victor's going to dash forward in front of the two dogs and start barking at them. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much all I can do. But uh, yeah. okay. Do you want to make an intimidation check for that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, intimidation. Okay. 
Nat 20. Oh my oh. god. Oh shit. A natural 2. Natural 6. Um, as you do this, you run up. Rawr, 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 rawr. Um, <laughs> and, and the dogs just like stop momentarily and are slightly surprised. And so as this is happening, you see the groundskeeper being like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and he turns into a shadow himself. Oh, jeez. And he begins to move towards you all as well. And so he will enter the fray. So let me just see. Let me... Who knew Willie so was going to be a shadow <laughs> monster? I mean, don't you remember that Halloween you. episode? Where Willie goes and invades everyone's dreams and kills everyone? I don't watch Simpsons since I was a it's kid. In, it's in character, all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, and so that's where we'll end it for tonight, is top of the round order. Alistair will go next. Um, we'll pick it up. For, I didn't realize it was after 10 until just a moment ago. So we'll, we'll pick it up it's here next time, next week. Now. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys will continue to uh, figure out what's going on at Grill Hun Manor. Nice. Uh, Get to the bottom of this. <laughs>